following is a special presentation of ESPN on ABC. Primetime college football here on ABC. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines Memorial Stadium. There's the two head coaches, Mark D'Antonio, Michigan State, Jeff Tedford of Cal. Kevin Riley will be the quarterback for Cal. Nate Longshore, remember, starter last year. Javon Ringer, you want to find a guy who's tough to bring down out of the backfield? This is him, the Big Ten and the Pac-10 coming up next. Welcome to the Nissan pregame shift proud sponsor of the Heisman Trophy and now John Saunders and we begin with the Nissan shift Virginia Tech East Carolina TJ Lee comes away with a block and the touchdown East Carolina upsets number 17 Virginia Tech 27 22 Bowling Green against number 25 Pittsburgh Anthony Turner takes a snap up the middle for the touchdown Bowling Green knocks off number 25 Pittsburgh by 10. And Ohio State against Youngstown State. Ohio State wins easily, but this is scary moment. Beanie Wells slips on the handoff on the exchange and comes up holding his ankle. They did do x-rays after the game, and apparently the x-rays were negative. Craig James alongside of Doug Flutie, but that's a scary moment for a guy who's a Heisman Trophy candidate. Well, it's, and it's also a, an opportunity for somebody else to step up. Maurice Wells, a running back from last year at Ohio State, he had nearly 400 yards. Watched him in the spring. When they practice, Maurice Wells gives this team a chance to keep the pace and go until Beanie gets back. They lose the big play explosive guy in Beanie Wells, but Ohio State will be right because in two weeks they got to get ready to go out and play against USC. Yeah. I think the other big story from this weekend so far this week has been the ACC and the lack of power there tonight Clemson carrying the torch for the ACC but NC State's gone down Virginia Tech's gone down Virginia go down, goes down Maryland almost loses to Delaware only by a touchdown so you got the top notch ACC team versus a middle of the road SEC team tonight in Alabama and Clemson's got to carry that torch for them because they don't look too good right now. Cal got off to such a great start last year behind Nate Longshore. They struggled down the stretch, and they decided to make a change. Yeah, you know, Longshore was getting injured. He gets banged up. He was a little inconsistent, so they got, decided to go with Kevin Riley. Riley, five touchdown passes towards the end of last season, though only one interception. And what you're looking for out of a quarterback is consistency, and that's what Jeff Tedford is hoping for with Riley. He's lost the three top yeah. weapons from last year now, yeah, and their guys so he doesn't have a lot to go. Are, are no experience. You know, they have a 13 combined catches between them. Jeff Tedford's always had a 1,000-yard rusher, and I think that's really what this team's going to look for is to find somebody who can step up. Javid Best is the guy most likely to be the next runner. Michigan State is not good on the road. They're a horrible plan against the Pac-10. So this all sets up for frustration for the quarterback Riley and to see if they can get the ground game going for Cal. And of course, we will see you again at halftime with all the day's scores and highlights. Right now, though, let's take you out to the West Coast and join Ron Franklin. Thanks, John Saunders, and welcome everybody to Berkeley, California, on an absolutely magnificent afternoon. It's an opening week showdown between a couple of teams from power conferences. Cal's got the home field and the home crowd, but the Michigan State Spartans have got the Heisman hopeful as Javon Ringer tries to improve on a 1,400-yard season. This has been the Nissan pregame shift. The opening kickoff is coming up. Welcome to ESPN Kickoff Week, presented by Gillette. Saturday Night Football on ABC is brought to you in high definition, live and in color. Tonight, dynamic backs square off as Javon Ringer and the Spartans take on Javid Best and the Golden Bears. Welcome to ABC Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines. All a part of kickoff week, presented by Gillette. The Michigan State Spartans travel to Berkeley, California, to take on the Cal Bears in primetime. 
Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin along with Ed Cunningham, and welcome to Berkeley, California. Chamber of Commerce loves this day. It is absolutely spotless. It's gorgeous. Talk about these two dynamic young men, running backs we're going to see this afternoon, Ed. All right, quick. Name the fourth leading uh, Russian returner in the country. Except for Michigan State fans. Javon Ringer over 1,400 yards last year, and nobody knows his name other than in the Big Ten and at Michigan State. A lot of that has to do with the fact that he shared time last year with Jehu Kulkrick. 21 rushing touchdowns for Kulkrick now gone. So the 5'9", 200-pound ringer will have to carry more of the load. Now, for the Cal Bears, they lost 1,500 yards when Justin Forsett left. But Javid Best, a true freshman who burst on the scene last year in the opener against Tennessee, is an explosive running back and kick returner. First team, all Pac-10 in kick returns last year. But he suffered a hip injury late in the season against USC. They were very concerned about the blood flow in that hip. The good news, Ron, for all of the Cal faithful, 100% healthy for today's game. And there's been a lot of speculation about who would be the starting quarterback for the Cal Bears. Well, when we come back, Heather Cox will tell you how that shook out. That and the opening kickoff next. So it is the home opener for the Cal Bears at a capacity house here at Memorial Stadium. We talked about the weather. It's absolutely magnificent. So as the Bears take the field, Heather Cox, the third member of our broadcast team, is here to tell us more about the quarterback situation. Heather? Indeed, wrong. The big question coming into this game was who would be Cal's starting quarterback? Well, the decision was finally made last Thursday, and it's the youngin over the veteran. Sophomore Kevin Riley, who has played in just seven quarters of college football, gets the nod over senior Nate Longshore, who has 41 career touchdown passes under his belt. The competition was close and intense. Coach Tedford said both quarterbacks can make plays with their arms, but ultimately it came down to the fact that Riley can make more plays with his feet and make something out of nothing. Tedford did say Nate Longshore will play in today's game, and the game plan remains the same regardless of who is in. One thing wrong, Riley has a brand new bunch of receivers, so Riley's quick feet could come in handy today. Okay, Heather, we look forward to hearing from you today. It appears as though Michigan State has won the toss, and it is going to be Michigan State receiving, so they're going to put their offense on the field first. As you look at the two head coaches, Coach D'Antonio of uh, Michigan State in his second season, we got a look uh, just prior to that of uh, Coach Tedford. So we are about to see something else that is a first. It simply doesn't happen very often, Ed, but two days ago, a young man walked on, and he's a soccer-style kicker, and the coaching staff looked at him, and they said, kick for us, and so he did. And a young fellow by the name of Giorgio Tavecchio. Giorgio T boy, that has a ring to it. <laughs> he was born in Milan, Italy. He'd been in one of their summer camps, and because school came back in, they could bring more walk-ons in, and they said right away, he's the best kickoff guy we have in camp. And look at him. He's pumped. He's screaming at his teammates to let's get it going Now, here. don't miss the ball, Giorgio. <laughs> here we go. As you can see, he's a left footer. Giorgio Tavecchio to kick it off for the Cal Bears to Michigan State. Ringer, one of the deep men, along with Wiley. And the coaches on the sideline are signaling, go ahead and kick it. And he does. And it's a nice one. Going to come down at the nine-yard line. This is Ringer. 30 to the 35. The top of your screen, you'll see a scroll of the starters on offense for the Spartans of Michigan State. As we take a closer look also at Brian Hoyer, the starting quarterback, the senior very solid numbers last year, but he's ready to get the taste of the bowl game out of his mouth against Boston College. He threw four interceptions, had a fumbled snap that was turned over, told us he was very anxious to get back under center in a real ball game. Michigan State just shy of their own 35. And they'll go with the running play. Ringer into the middle of the line, and he'll take it for a couple. Now let's identify the impact players on offense for the Spartans. Well, you're going to see tons and tons and then tons more of Javon Ringer. They are absolutely going to wear out this guy. He's a very explosive running back. The biggest offensive lineman up front, three-year starter, Roland Martin, will be pushing people out of the way for Ringer. And then I have a feeling, Ron, it's going to be a very close game. Brett Swenson, the kicker, third year, very accurate inside 40, may make a difference at the end of this ballgame. 
Second down and long. It's Senek in motion, straight ahead with the handoff tripped up, and I mean just somebody got a piece of the ankle. Otherwise, we might have had a very distance run by uh, Javon Ringer. He's up defensively, making the tackle for the Cal Bears. Cal Bears now coming out in a 3-4 defense, and Mark D'Antonio was talking about you know something a little new. They, they saw them running a little bit, that three-down lineman in the bowl game, but still something a little new for Michigan State to see in this first game. Student section, as usual, standing, making a lot of noise. It is third down. They need to take it to the 44. Pass over the middle. Thrown behind, but it's caught, and that is B.J. Cunningham who gets the start today because of a back and a hamstring injury to Dion Curry, and that is enough for the Spartan first down. Well, Eddie Young, the outside linebacker in that 3-4 set to the left of Hoyer, had a free run at the quarterback, but he hesitated for a second. And Hoyer throws it a little bit behind, and B.J. Cunningham, a young man that they are very excited about. He's a redshirt freshman. They almost pulled his redshirt last year. Quick pass. Three wide receivers outside in the left, and one of those was Javon Ringer. Top of the screen. What you're looking at is the defense for Cal. It will scroll on through. Ezaf along with Rulon Davis combining on the stop. So a quick snap by Michigan State, and out there with two wide receivers was Javon Ringer, which tells us we're going to see him all over the park today, any way they can to get him the football. That's as good as a pitch ball. Yeah, absolutely. Rouse in motion. Ringer straight ahead. Pushes the pile. Goes inside the 45, and he's down in the vicinity of the 43 yard line. Well, no real surprises so far, huh, Ron? I mean, this is exactly what you'd expect to see from Michigan State. It was interesting talking to Don Treadwell, the offensive coordinator. When we asked him about losing Jehu Kulkrick, he said, well, we're just going to have to exhaust Ringer, and we're already starting to see that. Luckily, not as hot as we thought it might be, so he, he should be okay. Compared to Palo Alto two days ago, this is an absolute cold front. Movement in the front. Flags go down. Looks like a free down for Michigan State. Under pressure, and the pass is simply thrown away. Heavy pressure coming from behind from Tyson Alou Alou. And now what has to happen is that veteran quarterback Hoyer needs to bring those young receivers. Remember, Devin Thomas is gone. Kellen Davis, the fine tight end, is gone. So Hoyer needs to get these guys in the huddle and say, look, we had a free Offside play. By the defense, five yard penalty, first down. We had a free play, so you guys they stopped running the routes. They had somebody has to break long and nobody did it. But let's take a look at the impact players. Yeah. For uh, Cal, of course, now in the 3-4, Zach Follett, an outside linebacker, led the team in sacks the last two years. Expect him to be coming off the edge. Morrell Williams was a preseason All-American senior three-year starter. And Anthony Felder, the guy who the coaches say made the most progress in this system in the spring and fall. On first down, pass over the middle, thrown a little too high and too hard to Mark Dell. And I'll tell you who had come on the field to play, a red shirt freshman out of Muskegon that they are really excited about, and that's Ashton Leggett. Now, he was in there with four wide receivers, and they had them spread out all over the field. Yep. So Michigan State trying to give Cal a lot of different looks on this opening series. And the reason Leggett not in there, A.J. Jimerson, Hurt his ankle this week and uh, did not make the trip. So Michigan State fans wondering why AJ, who has very good experience, not playing. He's not here. McPherson, the fullback, quick out pass though, and they've got to complete to BJ Cunningham, and they'll take it down inside the 30, and it'll be enough for the first down for Michigan State. That's good for 13 yards on the play. Now let's go back as we watch this replay and a little bit more time to talk with Ed as he identifies exactly what happens here. Well, you know, we saw this the other night, Ron. We were lucky enough to do that Stanford Oregon State game, and, and this is exactly what you need on that. It's not even really a screen. It, it, you just toss it over there really fast, but it's all up to the receiver in front of B.J. Cunningham, and that was Mark Dell who did a fine job in blocking. Two fullbacks in the ball game on this play, Hawkin and McPherson. Ringer, of course, the man who dots the eye. First down and 10. Pitch goes to Ringer. Back into the boundary. Short yardage. And now they'll get an opportunity to come back to you on what you, you mentioned just a while ago, and it is so important. Your football acumen goes a long way as a player is down and a flag. 
with years of experience and the, the wide receivers are very young if you've got a free play good heavens don't yeah. stop your run. Yeah, and, and that's what you have to have out of a veteran quarterback you know with Kevin Riley and that penalty going against Michigan State. I believe they may have gotten a, uh, a chop block, Ron. Yep, that's, yeah. that's what it was. Yeah, it was you can a... see right out on the edge of the play, and they, they've simplified. That's one of the things they simplified in the rules this year was high, low, and low high. There is no delineation, and there was one there on the edge of that play. So the penalty moves it back to the 43-yard line. It's first down. They got 25 to go. For you, under pressure, falling backwards, delivers the ball, and it is caught as a flag goes down and into the end zone for a touchdown is B.J. Cunningham. Now, is the flag offense or is it defense? <laughs> yeah, that, and you never really know when the ball's up in the air. B.J. Cunningham, a big guy at 6'2", he's up to 212 pounds. Cal is signaling it's going to go back. Pass interference, number three on yeah. the offense. Ezep is the man he was battling. And you see this quite often. And again, we're talking about youngsters. Redshirt freshman first action. The ball's up in the air, and Cunningham is going to push off of Ezef here. And that is the right call. I mean, the defender had great position, Ezef. Cunningham just put those hands up, put him right on his helmet. So that, that's just the proper when call. He, when he dumped him in the head, yeah. I think that was the. Yeah, the he, defining situation. Yeah, if he wouldn't have hit him there, and now you've got first and half a mile. 40. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, if you could sell this real estate, we could all retire. <laughs> it's on a fault line now. From the 42, draw play. Ringer tries to bounce it outside, turns the corner, 45, 50, and now to the 48-yard line as Ezep, Marcus Ezep, we have called his name now three times in this opening sequence. So Michigan State is running some uh, some clock here, but the penalties are absolutely killing them. Yeah, and you know, one thing that Mark D'Antonio in his first year at Michigan State did a really nice job of is improving how good they were in the penalty department. They're 95th the year before he got here, 12. So right now, first game's got some young guys making some mistakes. They'll get it sorted out, but this is not what Michigan State fans are used to from the D'Antonio coach team. Well, as you mentioned, he's worked so hard on discipline, trying to cut out penalties. Going to go downtown on this one at a little too far for B.J. Cunningham. B.J. Cunningham is a fun guy to watch run down the field though, and you can see why he is already a favorite target and it looks like to me that Hoyer and Cunningham need to work a little bit on their timing a couple of those deep throws that one Hoyer should actually under throw that ball because Cunningham had inside technique on Saquon Thompson and he could have he could have under thrown it back to the inside those are little things with a freshman they'll have to work out tenth play of the drive you got a third down and 30. Can they get it close enough to go for a field goal? Yeah, I think something like a screen or something to try to get around the 30 yard line and they could go for it. Or you're deep in the pocket. They set up a screen and he threw the ball badly. Wow. Threw it in front of Javon Ringer and he really didn't have an opportunity to catch it and turn up field. Alou Alou applying the pressure on the quarterback, Brian Hoyer. So that means that Aaron Bates, a sophomore out of New Concord, Ohio, will come in to punt. He was a three-sport performer in uh, in high school, and besides being the punter, he also was the holder. Low pass from center, and he is fortunate to have gotten it away. Boy, that was a heck of a job by Bates to get that kickoff. Well, we were talking about the different three-sport uh, athlete. He showed yeah. his athleticism there. Low snap by Shackleton, Alex Shackleton, the snapper, but what a great job. So we'll take a timeout as you watch a nice job by Aaron Bates just to get that thing away. 24 yards. And we are back in Berkeley with no score. First time we've seen Cal on offense tonight. And a look at Kevin Riley, who won the quarterbacking job. Job at best is not starting. It's going to be Shane Vereen, number 34 at tailback. That is him in motion going toward the top part of your screen, and they throw it back to him. And this is a double pass. 
and he's got a man wide open as tight end Cameron Mora, and the ball uh, was lofted a little too much. Well, what an excellent job by Otis Wiley, the strong safety. This is a backwards pass to Vereen. That's why Best was not in there because they had set this up. I, I kind of like this. Start the season with a trick play, and they had. Uh, Cameron Mora was wide open. It took Vereen a second to set his feet, and Wiley did a great job of getting over there and making a play on the ball, or this would have been a big play to start for Cal. Don't let me forget it. Trick plays remind me we got a little, little slowdown. I got a story to tell you about a game we did up in Pittsburgh involving trick plays. Second down and 10 from the 24. And it's a middle screen. Best and absolutely nothing. I mean, Michigan State is hiding and waiting. So the Cal starting lineups and they're scrolling across the top of your screen as we play on. And you know Kevin Riley a guy we talked about the problems that Hoyer had in his bowl game Well, Kevin Riley after that awful game against Oregon State where he ran and the clock ran out he really made up for it in the bowl game came in off the bench in the second quarter they were down 21 nothing went 16 for 19 three passing touchdowns one rushing touchdown I think that had a lot to do with why he's the starter today the pass to the sideline boy that is quite a hit just as the ball is caught by best he is really tagged by Chris L. Rucker. And that's going to bring up a punting situation. Number 19, a redshirt freshman. First time that Cal would have punted. It is Brian Anger. Just as it sounds, A N G E R. Brian the coaches, Anger. The coaches say that young man has a very lively leg. Wiley is the deep man for the Spartans. So one offensive series apiece. Nobody has scored, and here's the boot. High, high hanging kick. Wow. All the way back. Wow. Fair catch is called for at the 13 yard line. I'll say he's got a yeah, lot of leg. They turned over nicely. You're watching Saturday Night Football on ABC. Cal and Michigan State, no score. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares, no hidden fees. Cadillac. And Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. So welcome back to Berkeley, California. Ron Frank on the Ed Cunningham and Heather Cox. On an absolutely gorgeous day in Northern California. Not a cloud in the sky and a lot of sunshine, but it has cooled off. Some cool breezes coming off the bay. Ringer gets the handoff. Tries the right side. Cal is there and not only up to the task, there'll be no gain on the play. Well, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series continues on ESPN tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Eastern, with the Pepsi 500 at California. Then next Saturday, it's the final race before the chase, the Chevy Rock and Roll 400 at Richmond. Coverage begins 7 o'clock Eastern on ABC. Andrew Hawkins back in the ball game at fullback. Junior out of Wyoming, Michigan. Little play action this time, and going to go on top. It was coming down to Cunningham, and he had stepped out of bounds. That's the reason for the hat being thrown by the official. Marcus Ezep, who's been all over the place, was there with the cover. Well, we are dealing with some new rules this year, and uh, this being the big, the first big Saturday of college football, it's worth reviewing some of those. That. 40 second clock yep. uh, after each play set to 25 seconds after what are called administrative stoppages. That means a penalty, a timeout, replay, what have you. And the game clock restarts out of bounds plays once the ball has been respotted, with the exception of the last 159 of each half. Flag is down, and Hoyer has to stop. And the other night we had a situation yes. at uh, Palo Alto where there was two minutes left with the youngster star, stepped out of bounds. Five-yard penalty, remains third down. So, and, it, and 
you know, that did yeah. not go into effect yeah, because it was not under two minutes. And I suspected that both Oregon State and Stanford thought that the didn't know that the clock would restart when he stepped out at 2 0 0 but the rule says under two minutes that's why the graphic said yeah. 159 yeah it exactly. goes back to what the rule was last year where it stops on an out of bounds running out or fumbling out of bounds third down Hoyer has missed his last three passes he's got 15 yards to pick up here and dangerously high on that one on a quick look into Javon Ringer boy that thing could have been tipped and then intercepted but it was not Warrell Williams is the man who's there defending and the timing right now uh, for Brian Hoyer is just off slightly he, he's just not quite in rhythm they've got a bunch of new guys but he seems to be throwing the ball that time it threw it just a little too fast Aaron too Bates needs to answer because the field has been flipped by that beautiful punt just a moment ago by Brian Anger. Low pass and it's blocked in the end zone. Scramble for it. Cal will pick it up at the three and die for the touchdown. And the block was by Sean Katoos. Picked up. Nabufi. Nabufi picks it up and scores. And this was a direct function of what happened on the last snap. This time, again, not a great snap. And it gave Cal time to get in there and block it. And Katus is a young man that we talked with the defensive coordinator, Bob Gregory, about yesterday. He said that they just moved him to safety. He'd be used primarily on special team. Well, he certainly came through on his first chance today. As the extra point is up and it is good. So Seawright knocks it home, and it is a seven to nothing lead catch. So here's Katus right on the outside, comes unblocked, and then you should be able to get this ball off. The widest man should not be able to get to uh, get through. I apologize. That was Brent Johnson who came to the outside. I, I, I apologize, Ron. That was not Katus. That was Brent Johnson who came from the outside. Katus was the man to his inside who got to it. And you can see Nabufi diving for the end zone, so it is a seven to nothing beginning. And that pass was not on the ground, but the pass from center was very low again. And slow, too. You, when you watch that snap, it, it, it's floating. It's not coming on a line. That's Alex Shackleton, the snapper, they thought was very consistent through camp. But it's wondering what Michigan State may do who their backup is because that's two poor snaps in a row. Well the difficult thing anytime in any ball game to to make a mistake like that but when you're on the road it, it's almost like it is magnified don't you think absolutely yeah and, and that's the whole idea of home field advantage because now your crowds way into it and the bad news is now you have to go back on offense with sixty five thousand or so Cal fans ready to yell at you. Giorgio Tavecchio to kick it off for California. Kind of got under this one, not as long. It's going to come down at the 12. And this is Ringer back to the near sideline, 35 40, and out to the 45 yard line. So Michigan State will, after giving up the block punt for a touchdown, take it over with good field position. Well, when you look at some of the upsets today, East Carolina, they had a lot of kids coming back in, but they upset. Virginia Tech today 27 22 Bowling Green who was picked to finish fifth in their conference winners their open over pit and there's the one that people in green and white today are rejoicing at our hotel this morning I heard the that, cheer that Michigan State <laughs> crowd at our hotel was glued to the TV downstairs and they were pretty excited about that hit behind the line of scrimmage ringer showing his strength at least he fought it forward as Ezep is the man who winds up with the tackle. I'll tell you, there are 10,000 people with tickets here today. They had 5,000. They asked for 5,000 more. And the Bay Area, that entire white area where you don't see any blue or any gold, all of those folks are here to cheer on the, the fellows from East Lansing. And I know the coaching staff. And the kids were really excited about that, that they had that kind of representation. Huge alumni base out here in the Bay Area. 
Short drop, quick look in. Nice completion to Mark Dell. Sophomore out of Farmington Hills, Michigan. And also a good sized target at 6'2, 188. Well, and the thing that Mark D'Antonio and his staff in their first year really exceeded all expectations. Uh, the program had started to go sideways a little bit. He was a defensive back coach under Nick Saban for a few years, so he, he knew what he had to do to get this program back. They went seven and six. All the ball games they lost were very close. They were competitive in every game. And that's why you get 10,000 people coming to an away game like this because it was exciting for them to see it. Rouse in motion, but they give it to Ringer. And Ringer hit behind the line of scrimmage, going to be pushed back. They'll say he got it back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. Anthony Felder, number seven, is the man who was leading the charge. The other thing that Coach D'Antonio said to us the other day when we did our conference call with him, Ed, you have to worry about a leadership thing. They only have 13 scholarship seniors, and that is not a real high number. No, and they've got so many young guys in their specialist position, wide receiver. Again, we talked about Devin Thomas being gone, Callan Davis, Jehu Kulkrick. This is a very young team, except at quarterback and running back. Ringer again hit at the line of scrimmage, tried to spin off the tackle. I'll tell you, they're making life tough for him, just as Javid Best is having life tough on the other side. Both defenses looking for these two superior tailbacks. Well, and now you're in a position where you're not quite in Brett Swenson's territory. They they have tried Todd Valeski some in camp for these longer field goals, but. You know, beyond getting a first down, I think you need to get six, seven, eight yards before you're comfortable bringing Swenson in. Fred Smith, who is a true freshman, at the bottom of your screen, split to the left. Looking, that's who they go to, and that ball was tipped. Boy, there's some dangerous situations, those balls, and of course, that's the reason that you have tip drills for with defenses. You know, it's funny talking to Hoyer about Fred Smith. He said one of the hardest things that Fred had to get used to was how fast the ball comes in. You know, you go, you don't think about that, but most high school quarterbacks, they're not going to go play at the college level. Hoyer's got a big time arm, and he's just not used to that ball coming in that fast. He should have made a play on that ball. Fourth down and waiting for the snap. And he kicks this one for the coffin corner. And I'll tell you, it is a total knuckleball that is going to hit, bounce hard, and go into the end zone. 37 yards in the kick, so let's take a timeout. 5.02 remaining, opening quarter, and it's a chess match right now. Welcome back to Berkeley, California. You might have been wondering why I said it's still a chess match. That was a special teams touchdown. Neither offense has been able to dial the right program to make the other team's defense, you know, a little bit more humble than they are right now. They are ruling the roost at the line of scrimmage. Best bounces it outside and then gets bounced. And let's check into the studio. First time to get a report from him this afternoon. Matt Weiner, how are you, sir? Doing great, Ron. Here we go. Our nominee for the Pontiac game changing performance comes from Ann Arbor this afternoon. Brian Johnson to Brandon Godfrey to give the Utes a 25 10 lead that ultimately held up. Johnson with 305 yards through the air. Vote for this week's Pontiac game changer on ESPN.com starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Okay, Matt, thanks very much. We've got 424 remaining in the uh, opening quarter. Little play action here. Riley rolls and rolls, and now it's just going to have to throw this one away. Let's take a look now at the impact players for the Cal Bears. Well, Lee, you got to start right in the middle with Alex Mack. He came back for his senior year. He's the number one rated center in America. And then, of course, job at best. But right now, Ron, you said it best. These defenses getting the best of the running game. And Cameron Morrow, we saw him on that very first play. They list him as a tight end. He was the guy that was supposed to be on the receiving end of that Vereen halfback pass. But Morrow, a guy that can move all over the field. He's kind of a tweener in between a tight end and a wide receiver. Who came to practice on Wednesday of this week, drove up from Palo Alto to watch the Bears work out, knowing we have this one. And Morrow, they use a lot in the workouts. That pass is going to be incomplete. 
Laurel Cunningham was bobbling the ball, and when he came down on the turf, it bounced away from him. Well, it is worth mentioning how many players that Cal has lost on offense. We've talked about the guys gone from Michigan State, but they lost 454 career receptions when Robert Jordan, Deshaun Jackson, and Laval Hawkins all graduated. So for Cal and Michigan State, breaking in new receivers, and right now not looking great for either team. Well, let's see if he can do it again. Brian Anger on his first punt almost kicked it out of the universe and uh, and kind of nailed Michigan State deep at the 13 yard line. Let's see if he can duplicate that. It's a great pass from center and here's his boot. Not as far but very high. What a terrific cover kick and the ball was battled there and I mean battled this by guy. Wiley. What a nice job. You know sometimes you hear a coach say you know we really like this young punter. He's a freshman. We really like this. And that ball got so high up in the air, and Otis Wiley, he's looking right into the sun. Starting to say, and that's, that's a safety. beauty. Yeah, I'm telling you, that, that is the catch beauty of Wiley. Wiley. That high, high kick, 49 yards on that one. I'll tell you, right now, anger is is really keeping them pinned inside the 20. This is within uh, three yards of where he kicked the last one. Yeah, the coaches can't be mad at anger. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. You've been waiting for that. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Sweep, not going to go very far. Gillette presents kickoff week. Continues Labor Day on the ESPN. Number 18, Tennessee takes on UCLA. College football primetime presented by Jack Lakes as part of college kickoff week. Presented by Gillette on ESPN Monday night. That's 8 o'clock Eastern time. Here's a little something for you with Tennessee. Everybody's kind of talking about everybody else in the SEE, SEE East. Tennessee won the national championship in 1998. They were supposed to finish third in the SEC East, just like they are this year. They could get sneaky. Well, they're going to be a good football team as Ringer is tripped up just back to the line of scrimmage and consider this Mr. Manning had just graduated and become the number one draft choice of the Baltimore Colts so a lot Martin, of people yeah. simply didn't figure that that would happen and Philip Fulmer has a very good offensive line coming back Arian Foster great running back they've got a new spread offense yeah. new offense coordinator yeah. David Cutcliffe is up at uh, Duke, Duke. Yeah. so it's third down the line to make is the 27 yard line seven to nothing the Cal Bears on top were under three minutes to play in his opening stanza. Out of the play. Got it complete. Man, what an open hit. Charlie Gant, who is 252 pounds, I mean, he got belted and did not move one inch farther downfield. That was Sidquan Thompson, a junior out of Sacramento. All five, 984 pounds of Sidquan. And that was a nice job because Cal had brought a blitz to that side. And that's why the tight end, Charlie Gant, was running free. And Thompson did a great job of coming up from his cornerback position, let his guy go to make the hit. Let's see if we can uh, get a. A, a higher pass from center this time for Aaron Bates. There you go. And he got it away. Nice kick. Caught, no fair catch, and the tackle made back at the 25 as Sean Young gambled on the play. All time now for the ESPNU All State Standings Review. Well, nothing crazy so far in the top 10. Of course, we got so used to that last year. 2007 so things kind of shaking out although right outside of that Virginia Tech of course at number 17 lost to East Carolina today what a nice job Skip Holtz is doing at East Carolina yeah, he's really he really yeah. has uh, and you know I, I've heard people say you know it's it's a good thing that he didn't want to stick under his dad's coattail to, to do it on his own and to prove what kind of coach he is yeah, and he certainly is doing job. that. Yep, uh, congratulations to Skip and the job that he and his staff and his players did today. That's a huge win. Well, whenever you jump offside as a defender, you always point vigorously at someone contact, lined up across from you. On the defense, five yard penalty remains first down. Well, as we continue to play the at the top of your screen, you'll get a look at the scroll of the Michigan State starters on defense. Kevin Ryan, Richard sophomore out of Portland, <laughs> played at Beaverton High School. Did we do it again? Well, that time it was Teofilo. Te yeah, Teofilo 
thought it was Ball on. Start, number 58 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. You know what happened? His hair didn't flop down properly in the back, and he got. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you know, you, you hear a couple of different snap counts. One of them is first sound, meaning the first word out of the quarterback's mouth is when you go. That's when you're trying to get the defense uh, off guard. And I'm pretty sure Teofilo thought, yeah, this is on first sound when it was probably on one or two. You could see more of the tight end come back and double check on the snap count. He lines up on the right. This time he's blocking as they try to run with uh, Javid Best. And it's just not going to go very far again. Both of these offenses are going to be hard headed for people sitting at home saying, why do you keep doing that? Well, well, it's what makes play action go. If the running game not, does not there. Well, and let's not forget what Mar what uh, Jeff Tedford has done here. Everyone always talks about the great quarterbacks that he's he's uh, mentored, but he's always had a good running game. And now, listen, Justin Forsett and his 1,500 yards now up trying to make the Seattle Seahawks. They still have to run it between tackles. Let's see if Best is the guy who can do that. Well, an audible here on second down. They need to take it out to the 25 yard line. Riley, look to his right, dumps it off over the middle, and that is very close, if not the first down, to Cunningham. Laurel, a senior out of Fairfield, and it was Chris L. Rucker on the stop. Boy, this was a really nice job by a young quarterback. He thought he was going to go to the check down and then realize he had more talent. He looks over at best and then he comes back, resets his feet. And that's a feeling thing. Sometimes you can't even teach that, but for a young quarterback to feel that the pocket's not collapsing and then come to another option, that's very nice play. Eddie, that's your first first down, isn't it? it and it comes at 54 seconds left in the opening quarter. You're right, though. His reads, he went through them, and the pass to the right would not have been good. Here's best. Cuts it back into the middle. Finds a little bit of breathing room. It's going to be a gain of four. And now the impact players for the Spartans. Trevor Anderson came up the road from Cincinnati when Mark D'Antonio came, sat out last year. He's basically a two year starter, though, in this system. Greg Jones, we're going to be talking about him all night. He was a freshman All American last year, led the team in tackles as a true freshman. And Otis Wiley moved to strong safety. We saw that great catch he made on that punt already and made a great play already on that fake uh, toss at uh, the first play to get back and knock it over. Best almost found the key. He was dialing it. He broke open across the 45. That's a gain of 11. And back to back first downs for the Cow Bears. Two seconds down to one. And that is the end of the opening quarter. This presentation of Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Seven to nothing, Bears. Well, I told you it's a beautiful day, and they're dancing in the streets in Berkeley, California. <laughs> Whoa, that's pretty impressive. All right. First down. Cal as we open the second quarter at the 48 yard line and the Bears lead it 7 to nothing. Best with his longest run of the afternoon just a moment ago. A gain of 11. Give it to him again. And this time, whoa, you could hear the groan from the crowd. And let's go down to the sideline and Heather Cox with a special guest. Heather? Indeed, a very familiar face joined by Trent Dilfer, who just retired from the 49ers and unfortunately on vacation with your family, tore your Achilles. So first of all, how's the Achilles and how's life on the sideline? Sore right now, standing yeah. here, but uh, I don't, at least I'm not in the stands. You know, I was trying to have surgery on every part of my body while I played in the NFL, and I had to wait till I retired to have one more. Now, you're very closely affiliated with this Cal program. You played at Fresno State, but under Jeff Tedford, and then you played with Frank Signetti at the 49ers. How did you get the two to meet and to be here together on the staff? Well, Jeff and I have been dear friends ever since I played for him at Fresno, and, and Frank's one of the best football coaches I've ever been around. So I figured two best coaches I'd, two best coaches I'd ever had. Might as well put them together. And Cal right now putting on a little bit of a clinic. Now let's talk about life after football. You're joining the dark side. You're becoming one of us. Did you ever believe that you 
no, I can't. No, I can't believe I joined the dark side, but my experience at this point has been nothing but unbelievable. Greatest people in the world, ESPN, and, and look forward to getting to talking about the NFL instead of having to uh, get hurt by it every week. Well, and I think looking for a raise, too, saying ESPN's the greatest ever. Trent, thanks for your time. Get off that my foot, pleasure. would you? Okay, Heather, thanks very much. 20 yards in the play by Best. Now we had an 11 yarder just a moment ago. Now a 20 yarder. And I think they're beginning to dial something in. Mm -hmm. Shane Vereen checks in a tailback for Cal. They fake it to him. Riley throws it in the flat, and there's Morrow, the tight end. And a good open field tackle stops him very short. Chris Elrocker on the tackle. Yeah, and it feels like. Frank Signetti who is calling plays first year coach was at San Francisco last year coaching quarterbacks for the 49ers was hooked up via via that mutual friendship we just heard about and uh, it feels like he's starting to dial it in Jeff Tedford one of many head coaches around the country who are giving up play calling duty he had, he had in his past as a head coach not called plays but now he and Signetti working together and it is mostly coming out of uh, coach Signetti eighth play of the drive this whole thing started back at the 25 yard line. Riley hands it off and it is Vereen who stays in the ball game and he's going to take it inside the 30 to the 28 as Eric Gordon will put a stop on him. Vereen is one that we were watching in warm ups today and also on Wednesday that is really a fine looking young back also. You know it's funny we were talking to the Cal folks about job at best who played last year as a true freshman. There were some discussions last year if Vereen shouldn't have been the true freshman early on to play and not best. So as good as best is they really like this young man and they can walk him away from the line of scrimmage. You can play wide receiver too. Yep which is what they're doing right now. Redshirt freshman and he's out of Valencia riding. Got a man open over the middle. That's Morrow. The tight end will make the catch. And this is the best looking drive as far as being on sync with everybody at Cal his head. You know what is interesting talking to Kevin Riley. He's tight end over here. And we were talking to Kevin Riley about the play calling in Signetti and Signetti said look I'm my first year it's his first year as a true starter. We're going to have kind of a feel out uh, time where we have to figure out what we each like and, and now it starts to feel like they're getting on the same page. There's exactly what you explained on Thursday night. You see him just sit down. Mm -hmm. Got in the middle. Circle back toward the quarterback and just sat down. Or as the expression go. <laughs> yeah. Straight over the middle big opening best is back in the ball game and he fires it inside the 15 down to around the 10. It is going to be second down and short and right now everything that Cal is doing is working with both the run and the pass. Yeah. And uh, Frank Signetti Jr. of course if you've heard that name it's because his dad Frank senior 24 year head coach at Indiana University of Pennsylvania in West Virginia. So he's got coaching in his blood and you, you get a sense that starting to get a little rhythm in his play calling. These are all new players to him. Let's not forget that. And he had to learn the numbers in the system, system rather than all of them having to make a change for him. Second down and short straight ahead best puts a head down and he will be within about a yard and a half of picking up the first down. He is inside the 10. Now if you are Michigan State you better be really careful on this third and short not to get sucked into a play action and the tight end Mora releasing into the end zone because I get a sense up seven nothing 10 50 left in the second quarter a little bit, bit of momentum. This may be where they go for it on fourth down for Cal so why not take a little shot with a play action with a pass into the end zone. Twelfth play of the drive. That's Mora in motion. But they go with a running play best. Defense strings it out and he will have to fight to get back to the line of scrimmage. Give a lot of credit to that Spartan defense. They simply strung him out. They would not let him turn it upfield. Yeah, there's been really good lateral pursuit from this Pat Narduzzi coach defense, the defensive coordinator for Michigan State. Long and Holmes continuing to make that thing be strung out. And the one thing we asked about the speed of Best getting ready for it, he said, well, Javon Ringer is actually very similar. They're both kind of shorter, fast guys. So we've seen a guy with that much speed. I'm not that concerned about the speed difference. David Seawright to attempt a 27 yard field goal from the near hash mark. He is a freshman from San Diego. And count his first one good. 9.48 left until halftime. Our new score, the Cal Bears 10, the Spartans of Michigan State nothing.
And we are back, 9.48 left to play until halftime, and it's Cal 10 to nothing. Very quickly, I'm going to get to that story. I told you about the trick play thing. McPherson is coaching Syracuse. Mike Godfrey is coaching Pitt. We're in Pitt early, or let's say late 80s. Godfrey called us aside after our meeting with him and said, he said, hey, Ron, I've got a trick play. I'm going to run tomorrow night. McPherson did the same thing on the every, first play. On the first play. They both ran trick plays. They both scored. <laughs> we were 7 7 after a minute and a half. And the first time kicker almost sent this one very short and too high as it only comes down at the 35 yard line. And let's take a look at the Pacific Life game summary. Well, so far offensively, these teams have just been kind of trying to figure some things out. So, how do you score? You block a punt. Excellent job there by Cal, realizing that the first snap was low. Ringer has not sprung free yet. This new Cal 3 4 defense doing a fairly nice job of slowing him down. And then on that last drive, job at best for Cal finally got something going in the running game for Cal. Well, Tobecki, oh, that one was very high. It was a spinner. And very short, and as a result, the Spartans had good field position. Pressure from the backside, passes caught at the 47-yard line. Not enough for the first down, but uh, close to it. Look, good-looking play. Mark Dell on the receiving end, and that was Alu Alu who was applying pressure at the 44. And for Hoyer, I, I like the call by Don Treadwell, the offensive coordinator. Get him out, give him a run-pass option because he's only five for 11 right now. And in fairness to the senior, look. He's got a sophomore Mark Dell, B.J. Cunningham freshman, Rucker a freshman, Fred Smith a true freshman, Keyshawn Martin a true freshman. These are awfully young guys. The timing hasn't been there yet in the passing game for Michigan State. From the I formation, they go straight ahead with this handoff to Ringer, and Ringer is going to have the first down across the fifth, the 50, and then let's see about the 48s where they're going to place it down. Derek Hill is the man on the bottom of the stack for the Bears. Jeff Tedford and his defensive coordinator Bob Gregory going from the four down linemen and three linebackers to the three down linemen and four linebackers. There's three reasons they did it. It's who we have. We have great linebackers right now. It's also who you recruit. Very hard to get 6'4, 290 to 90 pounders. Easier to get 6'2, 230 guys. And also, all these spread offenses now, it gives you more linebackers, more speed on the, on the field is the reasons they did it. Which you need, that's right. Play action. Here comes pressure. Moyer falling back. Got the pass away complete to Dell. That is twice this afternoon that falling back Hoyer has thrown, falling away and still gotten the ball complete. And the reason he was able to do that was he knew that he had one on one coverage on the outside, and Dell runs a great corner route. Dell, believe it or not, is a sophomore, one of the most experienced receivers because he actually worked himself into the rotation last year. And you see Hoyer now going to Dell more often. It's got to be a comfort thing, I would think. I tell you, they've got to get Alu Alu off their quarterback, though. Tyson has been all number 44 for Cal. Ranger. And he's going to take it down to around the 20 yard line. Right now, let's take a look at our Aflac trivia question. And this week's question is who scored the winning touchdown oh, on, uh, on the infamous Stanford band play in 1982. Of course that was the five laterals. Hmm. I might have to look that one up. <laughs> I want to know that answer before we reveal it. <laughs> Are you Googling right now? <laughs> yeah. Second down and short ball up to 20 and they hand it off to Ringer back into the boundary and he breaks by a tackle. I'll tell you, they may call. We're, we don't have a five yard face mask anymore, but they are calling the real deal, and it's going to be a 15 yard in this case, a half the distance. Yeah, Darian Hagen, the corner over there. Face like mask, number 26 on the defense, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Darian Hagen, as he jumped over and tried to reach out, it looked like to me right there. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Good call. Another of the rule changes. No more five yard for incidental. And I'm so glad they got rid of that. <laughs> well, it, it was just a waste of time. You know, it, it, it didn't really endanger the player at all. And so now the head has to turn. It has to be pulled, and they'll just call the 15. And you could see that that he was his head was all the way back because it was grabbed. So the new line of scrimmage. It is a first and goal for the Spartans. Ball at the nine yard line. Ringer tries to bounce it outside and he does at the five down to the one yard line and there is a marker down and that's from the umpire. 
That's not always good news for the offensive line. Yeah, it's holding on Charlie Gant, the tight end. I mean, boy, you just got to let go. Watch on the right side of your screen, 83, freeze it right there. He's got a hold of him, and then he's got to know that Ringer's bouncing the outside, and he's just got to let go of Eddie Young. Eddie Young's probably not going to be able to make the play, so just let him go. Yeah, a little Texas two-step going on there. I know it's Saturday night, but it's a no-no, and it cost him big here because that run had gone all the way down to the one-yard line. And they were scrimmaging from the nine. And listen, we just showed Michigan State last year, one of the best teams in the country. They are really hurting themselves, keeping backing up. As soon as they get something going, they keep backing up with penalties. Four wide receiver set. Hoyer steps back, dumps it right over the middle, and Ringer was not looking for that one. Either that or got his eyes into the sunshine, which could very easily have happened. This is a tough sun right now. Yeah, the timing just doesn't look very good right now for Hoyer and his. And you'd figure with the ringer uh, being a senior and his experience, but right now it doesn't look very good. Well, there's a look into that sun right there, and it, it's a. We've got a little bit of a haze, which makes that sun even more glaring. Ringer will take a direct snap. Looked for a blocker, and the wide receiver ran behind it. That was really strange. It was rather than throw the block, Mark Dell runs behind his tailback. Watch this. Yeah, of course, this was made famous by Darren McFadden at Arkansas, and they're faking like they're going to hand it off underneath. But boy, what a good job! Nobody fooled in Anthony Felder. Felder, yeah. That we met with yesterday, and now. I think you're thinking if you're Michigan State, four or five yards and kick a field goal. I mean, you've just continued to back up. Don't try to force this and get a turnover. Hoyer, far sideline, throws for the end zone. Outstretch. Did he get it? Touchdown, Michigan State, Mark Dell. What was that about the sun? I mean, that was thrown right where the sun was. Holy cow, what a nice play by Dell. Bell just planes out, gives up his body. Watch it. And this is a very safe throw. I like this because they were already in field goal position. They just throw the fade. Actually didn't even have to look back towards the sun. Was running through it. But I think this, I think this might be, yeah, this is going to be reviewed, Rod, because his body position looked like it may have hit the ground. That, I don't think that's a catch. Looked to me like the ball. Yeah, I don't believe that's a catch. Nice effort. And you're right about where the ball was thrown actually he was Didn't looking to look more back. to the side yes. instead of back into directly into that high sky. Yeah I think they're going to I think they're going to overturn this one. Heck of an effort though. Oh I'm telling you. Oh yeah, yeah it, in fact it bounced ground. and hit yeah. the ground. Yeah. And if they look at that one first it won't take very long. And, th but, and this is why I like instant replay. There's a lot of things I don't like. The other night we had that long delay but this one. Heck of an effort but but you should get it right. You know the, it, you're at 10 nothing. Uh, and this obviously has a big yeah. change in the game because now Michigan State's going to go back fourth down and have to kick a field goal instead of attempt a field goal instead of take the touchdown. Mark Antonio looking on and also puts Tetford across the way, watching intently to see exactly what is going to happen. But the defensive secondary of Cal. They have not stopped signaling incomplete <laughs> yet. They're still doing it. That's a new dance here in <laughs> Berkeley. Well, Hagen, Hagen continues to walk around. He's out there on that far wing yeah. and had the cover, and he's wanting uh, a little, a little help review, right here. The play was ruled incomplete. Yeah. Only fourth down at the 22 yard line. And for Michigan State people who are here thinking, well, that might have been a homer. Uh, it was not. It was a great effort. A great effort by Mark Dell, but he clearly dropped the football and was unable to secure it to his body. Unfortunately, in football, it's not. You don't get an A for effort. It's a pass fail. It's a one or a zero, and that was not a catch. That's the second touchdown erased by penalty. This is going to be an attempt of 39 yards. Got good distance, and it is wide left and no good. 
And this stadium erupts. So let's take a time out, and as we go to break, you can take one more look. You're watching Saturday Night Football on ABC. Saturday Night Football on ABC, brought to you by Southwest Airlines, low fares, no hidden fees. Dodge, introducing the all-new Dodge Journey. If you can dream it, do it. Dodge, grab life. Chick-fil-A, we didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. And Aflac, ask about it at work. So we are back. The paintings of the infamous play <laughs> as Nate Longshore comes into the ball game. And we'll give you the answer to that trivia question in just a moment. Longshore on his first throw got his man, and that's Morrow, the tight end. And he set streak down the near sideline and is going to be forced out of bounds at the 28 yard line by Kendall Davis Clark. That's good for 54 yards. What was the word that Kevin Riley used yesterday when describing Mora? Stud. I mean, when we asked him, when we met with Kevin Riley last yesterday as a Michigan State player, comes to the sideline. That looks like Kendall Davis Clark. Yeah. Who's the free safety took over for Rhetoric Jenrette, who was dismissed from the team. So they're a little short handed at that position. Swing pass going to go to best. Turns the corner inside the 25, inside the 20, and it looks as though he's going to have the first down. And let's check in quickly with Matt Weiner back in New York. Matt. All right, Ron, let's get a check of your prime time pulse right now on ESPN. Illinois and Missouri, the Tigers scored in their opening drive. The line I have just answered with a Juice Williams touchdown pass, but failed to convert the extra point 7 6 there. And on ESPN 2, the season opener for Sylvester Crooms, Mississippi State team leading at Louisiana Tech. Okay, Matt, our situation is a 10 to nothing ball game. The Cal Bears on top. And we're about to go under five minutes to play until halftime, and they are driving again following a 54 yard completion. Longshore got it away, don't know how. Sean Young will make the catch. Not big yardage, but they came up with positive instead of negative. You know, and listen, it is worth noting Nate Longshore took a lot of heat last year for what happened. Cal started 5 0. They won a 1 and 6 slide, then won the bowl game, and Longshore took a lot of heat. Listen, he had a bad ankle. He had a bone chip floating around in there. He was really immobile. He's dealt with this demotion, and it's not really demotion. It just, these guys are going to go back and forth, as like as uh, his coach said, Signetti, as a complete pro. He's come out and prepared, and boy, he looks really sharp in this drive. Well, I think one of the reasons for pass over the middle, it is intercepted. Two yards into the end zone, that's Otis Wiley, and Wiley's got a chance to take it all the way, although he's caught from behind, but guess who? Mr. Best. Javid said, we just got a pickoff, but you're not going to take it back. Not in our house. 53 yards on the return. Wiley did an amazing job of hanging in there. He hid behind a cornerback, and I don't think Longshore saw him, and he just reached out and snatched it. Longshore looks off to the left. He was not locked in. This is actually a pretty good job by the quarterback. Excellent job by Wiley, though. We'll take a timeout. Ten to nothing. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by... New Gillette Body Wash. Unleash the power of your shower. Ten to nothing. We are back. 4:28 showing on the clock, and this cow crowd is up and cheering, hoping that that uh, long return of the interception is not going to leave them in a bad way. That may be a backwards pass, and that is exactly right. You see the linesman with the big L on his back coming over immediately to show where it went out of bounds. And it seems like every time Michigan State gets some momentum, great interception by Otis Wiley, good return. 
Michigan State does something to go backwards. And now you're sitting there looking at second and what do you call that? About uh, 18 yards. Boy, it's either a penalty or a backwards pass, but they cannot continue to back up. There's too much speed at linebacker for Cal to have to make up this much distance on second and third down. On second down, pass delivered incomplete. And boy, I mean, Alou, Alou was there and really pounded the quarterback as he was throwing the football. He's been all over him this afternoon. Okay, so here is the answer to our Athlete trivia question. Who scored the winning touchdown on the infamous Stanford band play in 1982? I don't even have a guess. Oh, I don't either. I looked. I tried to cheat, but it's not in there. Kevin Media Moore. Guy. Kevin Moen. Are you running? Delivers the ball, and the ball is knocked away, incomplete. That's Sitquan Thompson, the junior out of Sacramento Grant High School. You know, it was interesting. We were over at Stanford. We did the Stanford Oregon State game the other night over in Palo Alto, and we were in their Hall of Fame. Stanford lists the score of that game as if that touchdown never happened because that's right because they say if replay would have existed back then the ball would have been caught down after the second lateral so we're not going to count it. Fourth punt of the afternoon Aaron Bates waits for the snap. Driving wobbly spiral and going to be gathered at the 13. And a flag comes from the near sideline. Now the flag is back in front of the ball because I don't think that a fair catch was called for. I didn't see one. So this must be some kind of infraction. Holding. Yeah, Number 70, 17 by the return team. Half the distance to the goal from this end of the kick. First down. Conte is the man who is uh, being flagged for the hold. He was working on Brandon Denson and got that shirt away. So we'll take a timeout. 3.48 left until halftime, and our score remains Cal 10, Michigan State nothing. So Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines 10 to nothing Cal leading Michigan State and we have 348 left to play until halftime. Do you stay conservative down here or do you continue to go with what has been working for you as of late. Well Longshore back in the ball game at the quarterback. You know he just threw that interception and he threw it into coverage so I would think you're going to be pretty conservative. Hands it off to Best. Best trying to run through traffic, and I'm telling you, he <laughs> it is tough going down there. Well, of course, you flash back to the first start for Kevin Riley last year, and what was lost in this Oregon State game was the masterful drive he put together. Remember, or Cal was at number two. LSU had lost to Kentucky earlier in the day. They win this game. They go to number one and he makes a huge mistake tries to run the clock runs out he could have killed it again they still could have kicked the field goal and that started that one and six slide very dark times around here but they've talked about they've bounced back and early on in this game it sure seems like they have best breaks it running to his own blocker but it doesn't matter they're going to have a new set of downs he's all the way out in the vicinity of the 20 yard line 16 on the carry. Chris L. Rucker on the stop. And when you have a guy who, you know, we noticed this the other day at practice, how smoothly he accelerates. And that was one of the questions the Cal coaches had. He was a state track champion, and, and a lot of times coaches think, well, wait, is he just a fast guy who excels because he's fast at the high school level, or can he run between the tackles? And they found out very quickly that, yeah, he's tough. He's he's gained about 10 pounds in muscle. He can do it. Pass. Accepted. That's going to go for a touchdown, and guess who? Otis Wiley. Well, 
Well, these, these fans are pretty restless because that was just not a good throw. Uh, just right into, I mean, there was three white shirts around there. He really tried to force that ball. So two interceptions by Longshore in just a matter of minutes. And one, a 53-yard return. Cal's defense put a stopper on, and now they give up the interception and a pick six. So it is 10-7, our new score. And boy, the Blue Birds are out here in Berkeley. Well, you had a lot of momentum. And freeze it right before he throws the ball. Look at all of the coverage here, and here comes Wiley underneath, and he tries to force this ball right into Mora. I, just not quite sure what he's seen. Now, look, Mora may have run the wrong route. He may have uh, supposed to have maybe sat down, not continued his route, but at the same time, there's four white shirts <laughs> with the yeah. safety over the top. Being the fourth shirt, you, ju you just can't force that ball in there. And not surprised to see that Kevin Riley will be coming back in the game. I, I think we're going to see him ride the rest of this thing out. Well, I I don't think anyone would be safe over there in a coaching uniform if he did. <laughs> yeah, you might be right. Well, and that's left over from last year. And even though Frank Signetti, the new offensive coordinator, was across the bay at San Francisco, everybody in the Bay Area knew how rough things were over here. That one and six slide down the regular season and Nate Longshore right rightfully or wrongfully took a lot of that heat through a couple of interceptions late against uh, one against Stanford one against USC when they were in that game but at this point the new coach has to call down to the head coach and say let's get Riley back in and see if we can't make something happen and now you've got to regroup you've got all your timeouts two minutes 30 seconds see if you can get something back. And here comes the kick and this is going to be a line drive. Picked up 25 out to the 30. And Matt Weiner, let's check back in the studio with you. All right, Ron, here's a Taco Bell update from Atlanta. Number 24, Alabama, is having its way with number nine, Clemson. John Parker Wilson to Nick Walker. Wilson, nine of 11, five of those throws to Walker so far. And Bama has scored on all four possessions. They lead it 20 to three. Well, <laughs> wow. A Nick Saban football team, when you make mistakes against them, uh, they, they normally take advantage, and that's exactly what they've done. Riley with the screen. Here's Bass. Gets a block. He may go the distance. 40, 35, 30, down to the 28. Danny Porter saved a touchdown. It's going to be a gain of 33 yards. Well, what a great job. Watch the right guard, Gornero, get way out in front. Excuse me. That is the right guard, Malele. Norris Malele, the coaches talked about how athletic he was and gets way downfield and does a nice job cut blocking. Chris L. Tucker, the cornerback, and then you see the speed. Almost could have got a face mask there, but Otis Wiley was one of those guys who missed it. Mm -hmm. Slowed him down a bit, but 33 yards. Riley looking near side of the field. The ball is caught. First and goal, Cal. Just like that. Well, Riley is proving to the coaches they were right. 24 yards to Sean Young, who is a senior, got a 60 year of eligibility. He's a youngster from here in Brooklyn. And Mark D'Antonio cannot believe what he has seen. Finally got some momentum back with the interception return. And that ball was just absolutely thrown perfectly to Sean Young. And what a great story. He got a 60 year of eligibility. We still got 145 left to play. This drive has taken no time. Flag comes down. Well, I think of anything they're going to get Laurel Cunningham. I mean, he ran. Not sure. Chris L. Rucker is the man who had to cover. Wondering if they made the, the flag is still down, but I don't know if that ball was catchable by anyone. You said that was Chris L. Rucker over there? Yeah. Yeah. Cunningham just ran right into him and pushed off. So I don't think they can call Cunningham. 
interference. <laughs> number 29 on defense. Foul occurred in the end zone. By rule, the ball will be placed at the two-yard line. First down. Wow. That's just as, he, just as the referee is saying. <laughs> right, <laughs> he ran okay. into him. That uh, he was collided. <laughs> but I tell you, from what I saw up here, that looked like the offensive man pushed off. Ball from the two-yard line. Will it be best? Yes. Bounces it out tied to the right, heading for the corner. Touchdown. The young man from Vallejo takes it home. Say around these parts, that dude is fast. <laughs> There's no question. Man, he got that corner and a couple of guys had angles. They're totally late. misjudged. I'm, I'm sorry. They're late getting the 11th guy on, the man on the outside. Seawright to attempt the extra point. And he knocks it home. I mean, we still got a minute 36 left to play until the halftime. Let's take a couple of looks at the touchdown. Watch the white jerseys. One of them is Jones. Gets out there. Looks like he might have it, but the safety, 33, Danny Fortner, who's in because we got a report from Heather Cox down on the field. Kendall Davis Clark is out with a shoulder, so that's why Fortner's in there. Davis Clark, the fastest player on Michigan State's defense. They really could have used his speed, but I don't even know if that was enough with that much speed. And let's check in uh, quickly with Heather Cox. Heather? Ron, they call Javid Best the Roadrunner. Just how fast is he? In the time it takes most of us to sit down on the couch, pick up the remote, and turn on the football game, Best can run a 100-meter dash. Now, Best won the California State Championship in the 100 meters in 10.31 seconds. Just how good is that? That's fast enough to qualify for the Olympic trials, fast enough to make the Olympic team, and fast enough to compete for an NCAA championship. So, yes, Best could definitely have a future in track. In fact, he told me he has an absolute passion for it and plans to run for Cal this year. If, knock on wood, he can stay healthy, guys. I was interested in what the head coach said yesterday. When he was talking about him. He said, we had to find out. Is it a track man who wants to play football or a football player who likes to run track? And he said, we found out he's a football player who wants to run track. Hi. And that is going to be down the short of the 20 because Roos was run into by his own man and the knee hit the turf. And the only reason that Javid Best did not run track this spring was because of that hip injury he had last year against USC. Cal was so concerned. Anytime there's an injury that may affect the blood flow in the hip, everyone remembers what happened to Bo Jackson. And so Cal was so very careful. They went to specialists all over the country. All of them said, no, the blood flow is fine. But that's why he didn't run track during the spring was he was still trying to get healthy. But I think Heather's right. Come next winter and spring, you're going to see job at best running track for Cal. Well, you're going to try to pick up something here, and he'll be Tackle just shy of the 30 yard line. Coming up on the Bud Light halftime report, join Craig and Doug. We're going to have highlights from the nation's top teams, including Georgia, Ohio State, Southern Cal, and Oklahoma, plus Florida's Tim Tebow. The returning Heisman winner makes his 2008 debut. Nice job by Hoyer. He found Blair White over by the sideline. Of course, we're inside two minutes, so the new timing rules go back to the old timing rules. Ball out of bounds. The clock will stop. And here's Michigan State. It, you know, it felt like things were starting to pile on. You're only down 10, three timeouts, been at 11, and a fifth-year senior quarterback. You're in a pretty good position. But well, they got it now with a 33, 111 showing on the clock. Sides against Cal. Hoyer just dumps it off. Blair White on the receiving end. But it's Browner, Keith Browner, who jumped off size, number 57. Browner getting some playing time because Cameron Jordan, the normal defensive end in this situation, out for a violation of team rules. Keith, a part of the 
famous Browner family played uh, at Dorsey High School in Los Angeles. Offside, number 57 on the defense, five yard penalty, replay first down. I don't think anybody in the Browner family did not play major college football. All of them did. Well, he's a, quite a specimen at 6'6, 255 pounds. Pass over the middle. It is caught by Dell. And Dell will be tackled at the 45 yard line of Cal. Sitquan Thompson on the stop, but it's a gain of 18. You're call it 15, 16 yards before you're comfortable with a Swenson field goal, but with 56, 55 seconds and timeouts, that's not what you're thinking right now. Pass for the far sideline. Incomplete. It is dropped. And the ball actually, you made the mention earlier that there are times when you've got inside position that a pass underthrown is better than one that is thrown the right distance, and yeah. he still dropped this. Marcus Isef, he, he may have gotten away with a little bit too much of that left hand. Yeah, the sun's right in Dell's eyes. Not too much contact, though. I don't mind a non call there. It wasn't like he spun Dell around. He was in good position. But if you throw it underneath and the receiver stops, you may get a pass interference because the defender will then run into it. Michigan State called a timeout. There was two seconds left on the play clock. Take a break. 17 to 7. And we are back. 46 seconds showing on the game clock as you <laughs> put the sun shades over the lens to see what a difference it uh, makes with or without. Hoyer lobs it near sideline. The ball incomplete. Flag comes down. Charlie Gant, the intended receiver. Now, here is a point that we also need to be cognizant of, and certainly so is Michigan State. Cal receives the second half kickoff because on that opening drive, Spartans won the toss and elected to go offensive. Mm -hmm. So they certainly don't want to go away with Pass nothing interference. on the board. Number 18 on the defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Boy, I, you know, in watching that live, I didn't think Mike Muhammad interfered. In college football, there is no face guarding. The defender does not have to turn around and sight the ball. He just cannot make contact with the receiver. Boy, I mean, I know Muhammad's right hand was there, but that was kind of arm play between the two. I, I don't think that, that was pass interference. Blitz coming right up the middle and thrown, and it's a hot route. And not turning around was Charlie Gant. <laughs> ABC Tuesday of the Summer Games handed out medals for splat splashes and uh, face plants. These contestants would win gold. The biggest show of the season is the event that has America laughing. The all new Wipeout Tuesday, 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock Central on ABC. <laughs> 37 seconds left. Here comes pressure. Middle screen. Ringer. Finally, going to be stopped around the 11 yard line. Quickly getting back to the huddle. You could see Ringer sprinting back. And one thing right now, this whole half of the end zone for Michigan State, because the sun is so low, it's kind of unusable. Luckily, they're on the right hash, but they've got two receivers over on that side. But I don't think you can throw anything up in the air, or they're just not going to be able to see it. When that sun was a little higher, it wasn't as much of an issue. But right now, it's right in their eyes. Well, this is a timeout called by Michigan State. You can see the fans down there in the... Uh, left corner of the end zone the Michigan State faithful and they're having a tough time seeing right now They'll be glad when we hit halftime and let a little more time run off the clock So for Michigan State with one timeout in 20 seconds Look I know you want to get the right people in but you've got to keep that time out because that still allows you the chance to do something short of the end zone or run a draw. If you have to waste another timeout, 
The clock could run out if you want to play like that. Tyson Alualu has just been a thorn in your side. He's not in the ball game and has not been on this sequence, and we don't think he's injured. We kept looking at him on the sideline during that timeout. First and ten, Michigan State. They're 12 and a half yards away from making this a three-point ball game. Hoyer, pressure is there. Puts up a prayer and it is intercepted at the five yard line, and that is Sitquan Thompson. Third time today that he has been getting hit and still through the football. Yeah, this is Joe War 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 Williams. Yeah. And, and you know, you mentioned it earlier, Ron, a couple times where he's falling backwards and throws it. He got away with it. Yeah, and this one just throw it sideways, throw it out of bounds. And Thompson does an amazing job of getting that left foot down. What an excellent, excellent job. Young man's getting ready for the NFL. I think he might have gotten both feet down. One. <laughs> yeah, he continue did. and see if that other one. Absolutely. He tight roped it. What an excellent job by Thompson, but poor decision by a senior quarterback. To throw that up in the field of play. It looked like he was trying to throw it away, but if anything, take the sack, Ron, because then yeah. you're still in field goal range. If they they wasted a, a very good opportunity. 14 seconds on the clock, they'll take a knee, and that'll be the final play of the first half. And really for Michigan State, that has been the big thing. They have constantly been their own enemy with penalties, backwards passes, and now a huge interception. So with this halftime, 17 to 7, Cal on top. Stay tuned for the Bud Light halftime report after these messages. Welcome back to ESPN Kickoff Week, presented by Gillette. Welcome back to ABC Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. A part of kickoff week presented by Gillette. On our score at halftime, 17 to 7, the Bears of California on top in this one. Some very erratic play in that first half, but Ed, the biggest thing if you're a, a fan of the Spartans, uh, one pass interference call in the end zone that could have been a touchdown, another pass into the end zone that was called incomplete. But they had some opportunities, did not take advantage of. And what you're not used to seeing with a Mark D'Antonio coach team is this many mistakes. Yeah. I mean, we showed earlier how they cut the uh, the penalties way back from the year before, and this is how the scoring got started. Cal noticed Brett Johnson comes in, blocks a kick. The Buffy picks it up and goes in to score, but they noticed that the, the snapper was slow with the snap, so they rushed it then you don't expect a 39 yard field goal three year starting kicker to shank it over to the left and then this one was just shocking when Hoyer looking like they could answer at 17 to 7 throws it up in the field of play for the interception and uh, they just need to get out of their own way we take a look at the Pacific Life game summary stats pretty even game it's just those mistakes by Michigan State and penalties that are really hurting them right now so here comes the kick Two yards deep in the end zone, it's Best. And Best is going to take it out in the vicinity of the 20 yard line. Heather, you had a chance to visit with uh, some coaches. What'd you find out? Indeed, Ron. I talked to Jeff Tedford and obviously asked him about the quarterbacking situation. No surprise to us. Yes, Kevin Riley will play exclusively in the second half. I did ask Coach Tedford if, in hindsight, after those two interceptions, he would have handled Nate Longshore's time differently. He said, absolutely not. I plan to play him in the second quarter. He threw passes with confidence, just poor execution. I also asked if he's satisfied with the defensive switch from a 4 3 to a 3 4, and he said, other than one play that they gave up, he's very satisfied with the pressure and the defensive execution, guys. Okay, Heather, thanks very much. First play of the second half for the Cal Bears. Michigan State won the opening toss and elected to take the football. That's the reason it's the Bears on offense here to open the second half. Best tackled by Oren Wilson, sophomore out of Teaneck, New Jersey. Well, and no surprise that the Cal's running in the middle. They have. The best center in the country by most people's estimation Alex Mack he won the Morris Trophy last year which is a very prestigious trophy in the Pac-10 because it is voted on exclusively by defensive linemen and linebackers from other schools so he got 
uh, was a, would have been a first day pick in the NFL draft but decided to come back and they're doing a real good job in the middle right now. Quick pass goes out to best has the first down and will take it out across the 30 yard line. Well, Alex Mack was a wrestler and uh, I, we met with him yesterday and he's a very free spirit. Uh, that's favorite. my favorite. <laughs> favorite food like soul food. <laughs> yeah, when you're 6'5, 316 pounds, that's probably the right answer, isn't it? You know, the interesting thing, it, when you're that large, what he is working on and spending more time is almost like uh, more flexibility yep. so that he does not come up with muscle folds and what have you. Marine into the ball game at tailback. Riley throws this one low and maybe. Uh, best that it happened that way. Tad Smith, even if he had made the, the catch, would have been dead in his tracks. And you know, Ron, as a, uh, I was a center in college and went on to play in the NFL, but you know, my natural size is about what I am now, which is like an accountant, about 220 pounds. But when Alex Mack came in, the one thing I always look for size of the hands, so his bone structure is massive. He's, he's a very big man. He hasn't had, I know he said he likes all food, but. He's naturally that big and, and the way the game is now at that next level that's really going to help him out. He was a linebacker at times in high school. This pass kind of faded out there and it is complete and that's Shane Vereen and that goes back to the point that Ed made in the first half as Greg Jones makes the tackle. The, the versatility of Vereen you can use him as running back but also circle him out and throw it to him. And he did a great job of locating this ball and this is a nice throw by Riley. Greg Jones has excellent coverage so he throws it a little bit behind Jones never found the ball and that's really a mismatch Greg Jones one of the best linebackers in the Big Ten but Marine just too fast for him. Defoy and the ball game at fullback Little play action they're going to well he wanted to go on top and then throws short well that was Riley going through his reads he was winding up as though he was going to take it downtown and I think that's where the double coverage was. Then decided to throw it in the flat. Well, I tell you, this guy does not look like he has only played seven quarters of college football. He, he's just making good decisions. I mean, he, he'll learn how to get that ball out there, he, look, even if he completes that. Otis Wiley, who's been all over the field for Michigan State, right there to make the play. But his decision process, he's calm. Uh, you know, he can start pulling it down and running some, too. Remember, one of the big reasons he got this job is his athleticism when the play breaks down. Marine stays in the ball game at tailback. And they set up a screen for him and waited almost a little too long because as soon as it was caught, Greg Jones was right there to just mess up everything. Well, and Greg Jones, a young man that this staff, Pat Narduzzi and his defensive staff at Michigan State, just cannot talk highly enough about. He came in as a true freshman last year, the first freshman since 1976 to leave Michigan State in tackles, first team freshman All American, and he could play all three linebacker spots. He's a fine player. Interesting thing about him in their first scrimmage this year, he made the first six tackles of the scrimmage, and three of them were solo. And he could take a game over. Riley deep in the pocket, steps, delivers, had it, and the ball was dropped. Botan. Oh boy. He's going to look back at that one and not be happy with himself. And what did the coaches talk about? Nyan Botang, who has a national championship ring from the University of Florida, got in some off field troubles, but they talked about consistency in catching That's the right. ball. That's exactly right. He's got to make that play. Only the third time that Cal will have punted. So we get an opportunity once again to see uh, Brian Anger, the redshirt freshman. He boomed a couple in the first half. Dell is the deep man for Michigan State. And it went through his hands. The snap went right through his hands, and he can't get it away. On the turf and recovered by Michigan State. It'll be first down and 10. And all of a sudden, the fumble bug on special teams bites Cal. Well, it's interesting because we saw slow steps. Slow snaps from Michigan State, and you had mentioned, Ron, at halftime how Nick Sunberg of Cal really throws a hard snap, and this one a little high, but Anger just needs to be able to get that. And remember, this is a freshman punter, first time on a big stage, had a couple of great punts, but he's been on the sideline, getting a little cold. He's got to catch it. Jesse Johnson is the man for Michigan State who 
was there and blocked it. So let's see if the Spartans can take advantage to open this third quarter. Running play to the left side with Ringer. And Ringer is going to take it down in the vicinity of the six yard line. 17 to 7, our score. We're about to hit the 12 minute mark of the third quarter. And I get a feeling, Ron, that that is what we're going to see for the rest of this game is a steady dose of Ringer. Don Treadwell, the offensive coordinator, I'm sure sat down with with his head coach, Mark D'Antonio, and said, look, our receivers are not doing great. The quarterback's a little shaky. Let's, let's go with what we know works. Ringer, right side. What a great penetration play. That is Sitquan Thompson, who not only got penetration, made the perfect tackle, went down low and took his ankles away. Sitquan doing a nice job, and what you have to set up now, because you know he's coming off the edge. Maybe set up something to get him in trouble for coming down inside there and let the quarterback keep it. Sitquan is normally a punt return guy, but he's got a sore shoulder, and he didn't look like he had a sore shoulder on that tackle. But they do not have him doing punt returns tonight. Third down. And they need to take it to the two yard line for the first. Ranger. Close to the goal line. It's going to be a first down. Does not score, but it'll be first and goal, Spartans. Well, you now have a power Big Ten team saying, all right, enough of this already. Let's take our fullback, number 35, Jeff, Jeff McPherson. McPherson. Let's get him out on the edge on some little guys, and that's a big fullback going out there on Sidquan Thompson. And, and this is what you're going to get the rest of the game, I think. And, and rightfully so, Mark D'Antonio is tired of seeing his team go backwards. And he loves Javon now, too. Right side. Touchdown, Andre Anderson. I beg your pardon. It may have been Ringer, but I, I thought I saw 27, Andre Anderson. Swenson with the extra point, knocks it right down the middle. So as we go to break. Ringer takes it in for the touchdown. We got a three point game, and his family loves it. So we are back at a three point ball game with 1043 to play in the third quarter and every year we talk about the same thing in the first game of the year sometimes even into the second that special teams absolutely come up and bite you where they shouldn't and we have had some really bad snaps from center for both teams today that have cost them especially for Michigan State even on that PAT there that just not getting back fast enough and it's low. Now this is a high spinner and short. On the run, and that ball's coming back. At the 24 yard line, obviously it is alive, and it is Cal football. Jeff Tedford was not too far away from that, and his heart had to be right up in his throat. It was a perfect kick, it was a perfect pooch because it went between that second line and then the returners. And that second line thought the returners would come up, thought Javid Best would come up and get it, but it was a little too far for him. But, and also, you heard me say it's a spinner, which means that sucker could be just like a golf ball. It came backwards. That's yes, right. And come with a, a reverse action. It's a new Bellotta ball they're using in the Pac 10. <laughs> you see? He moves the pile forward out to the 31 yard line. Matt Weiner, what do you have for us? Ron, did someone mention special teams affecting season openers? 
Clemson with just 91 yards of total offense in the first half, but here comes C.J. Spiller opening kickoff to start the third quarter, 96 yards. He had just two carries and seven yards in the first half. The Tigers have some life down 13. <laughs> okay. Wow. Well, that's a home run, all right, if you need something to get you going as best. Is going to be stopped for about a half yard loss. It's Dwayne Holmes defensively. Well, and now the adjustment that Pat Narduzzi, the defensive coordinator at Michigan State, is doing is now. That was David Rolfe, a true freshman at linebacker. They're starting to run linebackers through on the run. It's almost like a run blitz. He just does not want to sit around and let these big offensive linemen. We already talked about the center, Mack, but Cornero. Malele, these are very powerful men for Cal in the middle. Mack is a next day player, and uh, he's got to get some bodies moving forward. Marine is in the ball game, a tailback for Cal. They like to throw to him, and that's where it goes. Out in the flat, Marine slung down, and boy, this is going to be close. That is Chris L. Rucker who spun him around. And I'm not sure he got what would be a Cal fans. Favorable spot. Although now, when you look at the yellow line, yeah. he's uh, he's on it. And uh, that that yellow line that we superimpose is usually pretty accurate. It looked to me like he may have come up just a tad. That's a good spot. Wow, that's a really good spot, actually. That's yeah. exactly where the ball stopped its progress. Yep. And that was uh, Greg Jones who was coming really hard and strong with that rush. If you're an inch short, I say you go for it with a center like Mac. Just run a quarterback sneak. I think he could get it done. Well, not going to need to. Them computers are pretty good, aren't they? I'll tell you, the Marine thing, he does give them an added weapon you know, with catching the ball out of the backfield and running. And especially when you lose a guy like Justin Forsett in his 1,500 yards, Best is a great back. You just don't know if he's going to be able to do it every down. It gives you another option. Defoe in the ball game at fullback for Cal. He is at fullback. Best goes straight ahead, short yardage, and let's go over to Heather Cox, and she is visiting with the quarterback's father. Indeed, Kevin Riley's dad, Faustin, and you are not only Kevin's father, but you're also a high school football coach in Beaverton, Oregon. What perspective do you watch your son with? Sort of the blissful bias of a father or that critical eye of a coach? You know, a little of both. Yeah. A little of both. I probably appreciate how cool it is that that he's here, you know, and getting a chance to be on a stage like this and it's something he's wanted his whole life. So it's pretty cool to be here and see it. Absolutely. Now one of the standout images of Kevin's young career was last year at Oregon State. He shared with us that after that game you called him about 45 minutes later and said, son, I'm proud of you, but you really messed up. What do you think? How has that fueled his fire over the last year? Well, you know, the main thing was, you know, I, I don't, I remembered myself being very positive and supportive. Of course, <laughs> the one little semi critical thing I said, I guess, stuck out in his head, but I was really proud of him. I told him, you know, you, you made a huge mistake, but you, you know, it was just one mistake. You did a lot of great things, and if it wasn't for you, they wouldn't have been in the game. So. I saw myself being very positive and supportive. I guess you saw it maybe a little different. Kids <laughs> always remember the one negative thing. Now, if I you guess. could put your coach's head on right now and had a direct line down to Kevin, what would you tell him? I just keep doing what they're doing. It's, you know, they're fine. They're fine. This is a good opponent. First games are always a little weird. And, uh, you know, for him, this is having a start to think about it this long and all this kind of stuff. You know, the longer they stay in it, the more they're going to loosen up, and the better things are going to go. All right, thanks so much for your time. The Riley is hoping to go 2-0 and oh this weekend. You won last night. Yes, Congrats. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Back to go you, Go Beaver and Beaver. <laughs> for those who missed it, uh, Kevin, the quarterback, his father, a high school football coach, and he's been around it all his life, as you see the swing pass to Vereen complete. And Riley, one of the interesting things about him, and the coaches said it, you could tell that he grew up in a household that was nothing but football. Yeah, and his dad was his coach, of course, Kevin, quarterback at Beaverton High School. And, you know, it was interesting hearing his dad talk about the positive things he did against Oregon State. He played really well in that game. And the coaches, when we met with him, said, that gave us the confidence that this young man could play at this level. Okay, he made a mistake. We probably could have done a better job preparing him for that moment. They were yeah. very honest about that, but he proved to them that he could play on the big stage. 
I'll tell you that uh, face mask penalty, we have put an asterisk by it as they go downtown, and it is caught inside the 10 yard line. Sean Young, the senior out of right here in Berkeley, 42 yards. Ashton Henderson trying to cover, but good. It's a great day, not only for the Riley family, but for the Young family, because Sean Young wasn't sure he was going to come back and play. Was granted a six year. He had surgery on both of his big toes. And his brother Eddie, who's a linebacker, both of them getting their first career starts on the same day. And the players and coaches talked about, because of all the youth at wide receiver, how important it is to have a senior for Faustin Riley's son to throw to. And you see his dad wanting to get even more excited, but <laughs> inside, I'm sure his uh, chest is bursting. Vereen knocked down after a gain of a couple. Long combining with the Adam Decker to make the stop for Michigan State. Boy, did you make a good point about that face mask, though. And Mark oh. D'Antonio, uh, he's just got to be brewing. He's so calm all the time. He's got such, yeah, such a calm veneer, but this has just got to be driving him crazy. They're they're playing well enough yeah. to win, but they're just continuing to hurt. And that themselves. was a long situation. It was something that, well, it was a huge break for the Cow Bears, and they have done what good football teams do: that's take advantage. Fake the reverse, wide open in the end zone. There's more of the tight end touchdown. Cow. Frank Signetti era of calling plays at Cal being off to a good start. That was a really good play action. Yes, it was. They froze everybody. Seawright knocks home the extra point. Well, let's take another look here. A little California dreaming. <laughs> Cameron Moore, Jr. out of Pomona, California. Touchdown. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares, no hidden fees. The GM employee discount for everyone. And Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. Wow, that's about all you could say when you look at that. 24 to 14. As uh, we are the city by the bay up in Berkeley tonight and our new score 24 to 14 and just under six minutes to play third quarter. Giorgio Tavecchio with the kick high spinner caught it to 20 yard line ringer and Raiders going to take that thing back out in the vicinity of the 35. Well, time now for the Southwest Airlines playbook. A couple of things to look at on this great play fake. Remember how well Cal's been running. Watch the safety and the strong side linebacker. They'll start to drift, and then more of the tight end is going to slip out. But there was also a mistake by the backside defensive end. That's Trevor Anderson, the transfer from Cincinnati. He's going to chase the ball. The rule for that backside end is if you don't see the ball, Go deep as the deepest man. Well, the deepest man was quarterback, but that's the running game that set that up. No running play going right up the middle, and Alou Alou, who had an outstanding first half, is uh, starting out the third quarter here the same way. It's not much of a gain. They'll see about two and a half yards on the play. Sun, as you can see, now about to tuck behind. The stadium here, what a gorgeous sunset out in uh, out in that bay, though. And don't let the sun set on Michigan State's running game. You're only down 10, 522 left in the third quarter. Mark D'Antonio, I'm sure, pounding his offensive staff saying, stick with Ringer. Ringer breaks one tackle, continues to fight, and they say that he stepped out of bounds at the 41. Tuesday this fall, ABC is bringing the game show to your house literally. It's your life and your chance to win big. But the question is, how well do you know your own family? Opportunity Knocks series premiere on Tuesday, September the 23rd on ABC.
two tight ends in the ball game with a third down and you can see they need to take it out to the 44 yard line short drop look in pass threw it too high incomplete and it was because of a loo that the ball was thrown high and now a flag has come in Yeah, B.J. Cunningham jumped up immediately because he got completely pushed by Saquon Thompson as that ball was coming in pass interference number five on the defense automatic first down the spot of foul. B.J. Cunningham jumped up. Yep. Knocked him with his shoulder. Knocked him off his route. You know, if he just runs up there and runs with him. And that's why that throw looked so bad was because Thompson had nudged Cunningham while the ball was in the air. That's why it's pass interference. Show with his a new set of downs as they scrimmage from their own 48-yard line. Each team now with seven penalties. Play action. Going to throw it back up the sideline and I'll tell you Javon Ringer they had faked it to him in the old circle route and he just took it right up the sideline and boy the overthrew it. Yeah. Wow this is tough. This has been a big gainer here. Yeah Hoyer just has not been completely on his game. We talked about the start of the game trying to wash that taste out of his mouth from the struggles he had in the bowl game against Boston College but this has just not been his day so far because if he throws that ball on time Ringer is maybe not in the end zone but it's a big game. Well Eddie Young was behind him the linebacker who had responsibility. Andre Anderson into the ball game. He gets the handoff and he also gets one two three four five golden jerseys led by Rulon Davis. That's going to go for a loss of about four yards on the play. Warrell Williams also helping out. Well this is a really nice job and this is something you can start to do in the three four defense and we'll we'll explain a little bit about that later where you have so much versatility with your linebackers that was actually a linebacker stunt where Al Williams was lined up to the left he started all the way over to the right and was standing in the backfield third down they got to take it down to the forty two yard line gets the pass away it's caught but two defenders right there to make it about three yards short of the first down. Well as bad as the punt game has been and your snapper's been I think you go for it here. And, it, and Michigan State's not going to but. Fourth and three I, you know. I know it's a conservative call but they just haven't had any luck at all with Alex Appleton their snapper I'd be just afraid. That something bad may happen here. Aaron Bates waits for the snap. So it's like a kickoff. It's end over end and is caught by Michigan State to make it dead inside the eight yard line. So we'll take a timeout. 333 left in the third quarter. Cal by 10, 24-14. Three thirty three left third quarter twenty four fourteen it's Cal coming up later we'll be naming the Chevrolet MVPs of our game. Some of the Cal faithful on hand enjoying it as uh, we're. Starting to go toward nighttime here in Berkeley. Shane Vereen back on the lineup at tailback for the Cal Bears. A scrimmage from their own eight yard line. Green gets the handoff and he's going to take it out to around the 13. Well, this stadium is built. You see that? That is the fault line. The Hayward fault line runs directly underneath this football stadium, which was built way back in 1923. And uh, there have been a few debates going on about a new facility. And uh, in just a few minutes, Heather is going to give us. A more enlightening story of exactly what's going on because it he's got a lot of chapters and a lot of verses right now. And the coaches are all hoping that they could soon get themselves a new facility. Green broke it open for a moment. And let's go down and check in with Heather. 
Ron, you're right. The tree sitter saga at Cal does continue. It's a standoff between environmentalists, some of whom have been living in the oak trees in protest for nearly two years and the Cal administration. Now, the tree sitters claim that the grove is a Native American burial site, a World War I memorial, and a wildlife corridor. The university says it's weighing the value of a landscaping project versus the life safety needs of 400 student athletes. Now, there have been some new developments this week. An all points judge released a 129 page ruling that would allow the university to begin construction on its training facility pending a ruling from the Court of Appeals on a new injunction. Now, because of this week's news, the police presence around the Grove has been quadrupled for today's game to help prevent any hostilities as we do see a flag guy. Now, guys, I was able to talk to the four guys that remain in the tree. They are steadfast in their resolve, insisting that nothing but force will bring them down. Cal officials told me they're working with a professional mediator. They hope that when they take a break and break ground, which they could be as early as next week, they'll see a voluntary climb down and avoid what they're calling a forced extraction. Oh. Only time will tell. Oh, a forced extraction. And the key to this whole thing is, look, the, the stadium needs to be retrofitted because of that fault line you yeah. showed us a moment ago. And then they're going to add facilities, locker rooms, things like that. The women's softball team here at Cal has to change in their cars. It's been a long time coming for them to they get new facilities. facilities. No question and and about that, that grove of trees was pan planted after the stadium was built. It was part of the planting they did around the stadium. So got to side with the university on this one. Last boy, somebody got a hand on the ankle and tripped him up. Here is a design of what the new facility is going to look like. And, it, you know, you, Jeff Tedford has been, you know, how many classes is he going to have to tell, hey, we're going to have a new facility, and then all of a sudden, yeah. you know, that group graduates and they still don't have a new facility. And what did Tedford say to us? He said, I had to stop telling recruits when it would happen because yeah. it became a problem with our credibility. But now it sounds like any day now the final verdict could come in and they'll break ground almost instantly, instantly on a on a facility for 13 different athletic teams, not just the football program. Fade round and old oh boy overthrew him just a little too quickly. That was Laurel Cunningham, and he got him open. One other thing, and before we leave this, is now a lot of people who were neither one side or the other, or maybe a little bit in favor of the tree people, they're getting tired of it. They're getting tired of the people in the trees and everything that's going on. Well, and the tree people are not affiliated with the university at all. They're not students. They're just there trying to make a point. And when you really look into what those trees are, they were planted. It was really a landscaping project in 1923. So they're kind of grabbing for straws, saying it's a World War I memorial. And There's also been great public on the ground. And, yeah, and it, it's, just, it's just none of those things. The university has looked into each one of those claims, and they're simply not true. Third down. Riley got his man, and I'll tell you, dropped the ball. Botang, and that is two tonight. Wow. And he's going to have to get that figured out because the coaches will lose confidence. You know, it's kind of like with Nate Longshore and uh, Coach Tedford telling Heather that Riley would go the distance. He, listen, Botang is a fine athlete. He was a great basketball player in high school in New York. That's what's amazing. You would think yeah. he had really good hands, wouldn't you? Sometimes you get in your head, though. You know, when, when you start getting the drops, you start thinking too much instead of just playing. And when you put when you filter through the gray matter those hands clamp up. Anger is back to punt. Pressure coming on him. Not his best of the night but not bad either. And Michigan State's deep back Dell runs away from it and this thing's going to go dead at the three yard line. Gillette presents kickoff week continues Labor Day on ESPN number 18 Tennessee against UCLA college football primetime presented by Jack Links as part of college kickoff week presented by Gillette on ESPN Monday night 8 Eastern. You know Ron we played here in 1989 when I was at the University of Washington right after the earthquake of 1989 that stopped the World Series we almost couldn't come play but you talked about that fault line we talked to the players from Cal after that game they said they saw the goalpost go down and touch the ground and come back up when that earthquake hit. Wow. By the way that punt as this running play is stopped for no gain and it is Browner who's there to make the tackle. It 
the thing that, that that is so fascinating about this this whole deal is to, to have this facility built over a fault line like that and you know actually they've never they've never had a serious situation out of it which is absolutely yeah. great by the way these goal posts something we didn't even get to mention on Thursday night standard is 30 they are 40 feet high on the corners to help the officials on field goals are you back to throw got a man open out there and that's going to be Cunningham who will be shoved out of bounds but not before he picks up a huge chunk to the twenty one and a half. You know it's funny for Michigan State if you go back to last year at the beginning of the season nobody really knew what Devin Thomas was going to do and of course he exploded on the scene is now on to the NFL and there was talk about B.J. Cunningham who was a true freshman and you see he's a very talented young man he's got great hands but they were going to pull his red shirt until Devin Thomas started playing so well and then they got to sit him for the year. That is the end of the third quarter. So our score, Cal 24, Michigan State 14. This presentation of Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. In Berkeley for the final 15 minutes. Michigan State on offense. Play action, Hoyer throws it out and got this one complete to his fullback McPherson. And they're going to say he had stepped out of bounds before he was able to catch the football. Well, awfully close, but right when he catches it, you see that left foot go out of bounds. And it was actually pretty good coverage there by Eddie Young. He McPherson had to run around Young, and I think that's why he had to step out of bounds because that was a really nice throw by Hoyer. Well, the line, the linesman was coming back up the line. The field judge was down the field, and uh, together they were they nailed it. They said nope, uh, out of bounds, incomplete. Second down and ten. They set up a screen, and boy, he threw the ball right into traffic. Browner almost caught it. Matt Weiner, what have you got? Brown, I may have the hammer that Alabama is laying on Clemson right now. 23-10 in the third quarter. John Parker Wilson to Julio Jones. Top receiver recruit in the country's very first touchdown at Bama. It's now a 21-point lead for the Crimson Tide in Atlanta. Wow. You know, and I think there are some people who are not shocked over that. Third down and ten. Got a man open. Gets it out to Dell. Breaks a tackle and then steps out of bounds as he motors up the sideline. But that will give him a new set of downs. It's good for 25 yards. Two good throws in a row by Hoyer too. You know that one. Even though McPherson was out of bounds, this time he sees Dell coming open in front of the linebacker, or excuse me, behind the linebacker in front of the safety and cornerback. And it's just a really nice job of throwing it right now. If you wait too long, that safety, Marcus Ezep, is going to get over there and make the play. Good timing and good throw by Hoyer. So the ball plays down at the 46 yard line. Hoyer hands it off. Good heavens, what a hit on Ringer. And it is Zach Follett. Follett, as soon as the ball went into the breadbasket of Ringer, then it was Follett who took over. Well, they've got to know that Follett is unblocked on the end there. There was nothing to keep him home. There was not a tight end on that side. Follett now lines up on the line of scrimmage in the new 3 4 alignment. They got blocked. Don't take anything away from Follett. He went and made the play. But Michigan State has to realize we can't run this play. We don't have a blocker for him. Senior quarterback's got to get out of that. And you also stand a chance of losing your very best football player. And a fumble. Yes. They pitch it back to Ringer, tries the other side, runs into his own man, then bounces it outside, and all of a sudden he's covered up by five gold jerseys. Anthony Felder was the first man to make contact with him. Let's go back to that play by Follett just a moment ago. Well, one thing that you're the three four allows you to do is start to get guys like this in space, and that's exactly why they do this. You've got one, two, three down linemen. And you get a speed guy on the edge. That's the whole idea of the 3-4 is to allow guys like Follett who are so active to hopefully, they're not going to be unblocked all the time, but just get them in space. 
Once third down, they need to take it to the 44. Got the pass. It is complete to Blair White. And Blair will pick up the first down for the Michigan State Spartans. Boy, I tell you, Hoyer has found a nice little rhythm. And Blair White is a guy who has really worked his way into the mix. He's had to fight for everything he's got. And uh, when we talked to Hoyer the other day, he said, this is a guy, Blair White, that I really trust. And you can see there, the quarterback starting to get a rhythm for Michigan State. You know, Blair Just White. in time. Blair White had been a guy that did nothing but special teams. But as Ed said, he has worked himself into a playing position. And you can see why. Ringer, you see all the goal jerseys following him to the sideline. Eddie Young was the man with the greatest distance away out there, along with Alu Alu. And it's going to be a gain, and we'll call it a half yard, but that's about it. Boy, Alu Alu is awfully active for a guy who's 290 pounds, isn't he? I'll tell you, we have called his name all night long. He just really doesn't seem to get tired. What are the numbers on Ringer? Been a tough evening, I'll tell you. Ball tipped and almost intercepted. You know, this is the part, Rod, when we were when we've been talking to coaches the last couple of weeks, this is the part where the new timing rule of going out of bounds and the clock running. For Michigan State, they've got to be aware of that because until you get inside of two minutes at the end of the game, somebody goes out of bounds, the clock's going to run. And they're in a situation where they have to start thinking at 12.07 left of conserving some clock down 10. 62 yards on 24 carries. You see those averages dropping to 2.3 in the second half. That ball in and out of the hands of Charlie Gant. Well, Mark D'Antonio just walked by his kicking team like he's thinking about what to do here. You're kind of in between because if this punt goes into the end zone, comes back out to the 20, I think this is the right call. If you were at about eight minutes, I think you'd probably go for it here. But with 12, defense has got a little bit of a rest here. I think this is the right idea to punt this away. Aaron Bates waits for the snap. Tell you, that's going to be a roughing the kicker or running into the kicker. We'll see. Mikhail Kendricks of Cal just couldn't quite pull off. Personal foul. Roughing oh, the kicker. The big one. Number 30 on the defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. And you know, Ron, this is the first true break that's gone Michigan State's way. Yeah, you're right. With a penalty. Watch what happens. His leg is outstretched, yep. which over accentuated. I mean, the forward progress by the defender, that's what pushed him back so quickly. And don't think Bates didn't see him coming oh, and leave it. that leg up, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Give him credit, though, because this is a humongous break for Michigan State. Turning the ball over with about 12 minutes left, the way that Cal has been able to establish a little bit of a running game. And that young man makes a mistake. He, he, you got to come across the putter. You can't run straight at him. You've got to go by him at an angle when you try to block it. So the flag thrown on Kendricks. First down now with the 25. Ringer hammered down after he gains a couple. Rulon Davis. Rulon's an interesting story. Uh, went and joined the Marines when he first got out of high school. And he's a very large man who has learned how to control his weight, which has really helped him. And, and the coaches think that. You know, since he has learned that, that with some more hard work, that he's a next level guy. Yeah, and he's had some problems with injuries, too. And you wonder if that didn't have something to do with his weight. Of course, some of America's finest here watching the game. Which he was. <laughs> I guess you don't say was, he still is. You always are. Throws for the corner. Got it complete at the 10 yard line. Shoved out of bounds, and that is B.J. Cunningham again. You know, and it's not just because of his last night name, but I really do like B.J. Cunningham. <laughs> I'll start calling him Smith. <laughs> yeah, but this guy, you know, when you watch a guy who knows how to turn his hands over depending on where the ball is yeah, yeah. so that he's not cradling it, you see young receivers a lot of times get afraid and they want to cradle it and it hits the pads and bounce out. But Cunningham does an excellent job 
of turning his hands in front of him so he gets that soft basket in there for the football. Now let's see if it's Ringer or if they throw. Now it's Ringer. Right up the middle. Bounces it outside with the five. He'll score. And those 10,000 from East Lansing are up. And they are making some noise because we got a four point game and it could become a three pointer very quickly. <laughs> and my guy B.J. Cunningham almost blew up the play. He came in motion and ran into the fullback. So Ringer had no lead blocker, but I think it may have confused Cal for some reason. And Ringer walks in. It's like a basketball coach who tells you he told his team to go zone. The zone was so bad it really worked. <laughs> the other team had not seen anything like it. That was a weird looking play. Here's the extra point attempt. Swinson. And he is good. So as we go to break, one more look at Javon Ringer's touchdown. 14 carries, 97 yards, or 14 plays, I should say. And here he scores it. Boy, is that beautiful or what? As you see us going just past sunset, and we got a three point ball game. And looking upon the hill, Tightwad Hill. Tightwad Hill. Yeah, that's they got a capacity house up there. 97 yards on that drive. How good is that? Molesky prepares to kick it off for Michigan State. Javid Best, the deepest man, Slocum is right in front of him. It's going to be Best from the six. Out across the 40 yard line. Jeremy Ware made the tackle. Let's go back to the touchdown. Well, B.J. Cunningham comes in motion, and I don't think that this was meant to happen. He runs into Rouse, but watch Rouse. Rouse does a great job, the fullback. Cunningham just has to get out of the way. Rouse continues the block, and it reminds me of another Cunningham who, back in the late 80s, played at the University of Washington. Named Ed, who I had a coach. I used to, if they called 34, I'd go 35. <laughs> and finally, my coach said, Ed, you're either the dumbest smart guy I've ever met or the smartest dumb guy. <laughs> and I haven't figured it out yet. So don't feel so bad, BJ. We all go the wrong way sometimes. I'll tell you what, Cunningham, uh, because they scored, he may not get yeah, quite get a as laugh. much feel. Yeah. It, it'll get a laugh rather than. Uh, yeah, if he knocked Rouse over and there was a tackle in the backfield, yeah. it would be a whole different reaction come film time tomorrow. Decker makes the tackle on uh, Shane Green. This young man's got a very bright future, though. Mark D'Antonio, and, and we talked to him about recruiting. You know, they can't talk about names and everything, but they have more four stars committed right now than he's ever had in his head coaching career, even going back to Cincinnati. He's got things going really well on the recruiting front at Michigan State. When you get guys like B.J. Cunningham starting to show off. Second down and 10. Alex Mack out of the football. And boy, Vereen hesitated at the line, and he got engulfed. From Colin Meadley. Let's take a look at the Pacific Life summary. Two second and a half touchdowns for Javon Ringer. And you know, they came out, you got the feeling that this is exactly what the offensive coordinator, Don Treadwell, and his head coach, Mark D'Antonio, talked about at halftime. They just couldn't get the passing game going. They've now got that going, and they've got some momentum. You know, when it, when you've got a guy like Ringer, a senior, he had 1,400 plus yards, he gets going, it gets the whole team into it. Now the defense seems to be playing with a little more urgency. Only two of seven on third down conversions for Cal. They've got to take this all the way across midfield to the 49. Pass is caught in the middle, and it's not only going to be a first down, you can add almost 10 yards more onto it. Oh, they're going to spot him down at the 46. Sean Young, 16 yards. Well, Sean is having a good time in his own backyard today. Senior, sixth year senior. Good pressure, but they were setting up the screen. And so Riley did the very best he could. That's Trevor Anderson. A lot of times when you're setting up the screen, people are let go, but that was Anderson just beating the right tackle to the inside. Cal without Mike Tepper, their usual right tackle. So Schwartz is out there, a freshman, and the transfer Anderson got in there quick, but nice job by Riley to hang in there. Blitz coming right up the middle. Riley gets away from the first wave, but not the second wave. 
First time that he has been sacked this evening. And let's give it a split between Neely and Kershaw. Well, it's such a rare thing around here. Cal offensive line has been one of the best offensive lines in the country over the last two years with sacks allowed last year only 11 third in the country. Of course we talked about Mac the center but uh, Mike Tepper being gone at tackle. We've got two freshmen out there and uh, we're starting to see that pay off a little bit for Michigan State. And they get the ball to best and there is nothing there this time Brandon Long leading the attack for Michigan State. So a sack on first down a loss of yards well best may have gotten a half yard in the play but it's now third down again and I think for Cal you've got to think Michigan State starting to get a little pass rush you may have to start leaving some people in to pass block best the tight end might have to stay in so now you're looking at just a couple of routes you got two receivers to the top and you've got a very talented Marvin Jones a freshman down here at the bottom Marvin where's number one. There's pressure. Riley got it away, and it is caught inside the 25-yard line. Coming back for the pass is Cameron Moore, and that's where his 245 pounds paid off for him. And this is exactly why Kevin Riley is the starting quarterback at Cal this year. That's what he gives you: his athletic ability, running around. And D'Antonio cannot believe it. We, they got there. That's the thing. They got there. At both ends. Absolutely. And the, the pressure was starting to get there, but then it's athletic quarterback Kevin Riley that makes a sensational play to keep the drive going. Woo. You talk about plays that you put an asterisk by. You certainly put one by that one. First down. Big opening. Best. 20, 15, 10. Down to the five. It'll be first and goal. Cal Bears. Kendall Davis Clark. Finally shoved him out of bounds. What an awesome, awesome lead block. Taufoa, the fullback number 23, gets his pads down low and look at the hole that he opens up. Wow. Absolutely wrecked the helmet of Jones. Will Tafoa with a great lead block. Excellent job getting his pads down. And we talked about how good Greg Jones is. That's a good ball player. He just put a snap in on. Well, for best, 19 carries, 102 yards, and a touchdown. Mora in motion. Best. And they string it out, and he's going to be stopped for no gain. In fact, he may lose a couple as Decker is out there with him. But you know what? If you're Cal, you still got three more downs to get it done. We, we are about to go under six minutes left in our ball game. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry is exactly right. No, sir. And that's somebody from Michigan State. And that's the shoulder. Kendall Davis Clark. Wow. Yeah, well, that's the same shoulder. Remember earlier we had a report from Heather Cox that he was and that you know, shoulders hurt. He's the guy, the sprinter. Time in the 40, a 4-3-4, played corner, and he moved him inside to safety. So Vereen is in the ball game at tailback. Play action. Wide open. Touchdown to Pua. And he deserves it after that block he threw. Seawright to attempt the extra point. Knocks it home. Well, not a bad thing for a senior to get your first career touchdown. Will Tafoa comes out of the backfield all the way across, gets his first touchdown, and the momentum goes back to Cal. 545 left. Let's see if Michigan State can answer. Well, the 
if you went away for a couple of moments, new score, 31-21. It is Cal stepping out just a little bit further. And length of time or the amount of time left as you look at nine plays, 59 yards, almost five minutes off the clock. We only have 545 left in our game. And that's one ex Tedford quarterback, Trent Dilfer, coming over and giving yeah. the new T uh, Tedford quarterback a high five. Of course, Ted one of the big reasons Frank Signetti is here is because Trent Dilfer played for him last year. Seawright is going to take over the kickoff duties here. Well, Becky, I think they decided maybe his leg was getting a little tired, so they got this one down to the team. This is Ringer. Whew. He gets popped really hard. And let's go back to the touchdown, eh? Well, let's take a look at what happens to Mich Michigan State. Here's your fullback. You just don't expect him to come all the way across. They blitz a linebacker. All these guys go with the flow. And Will Tafoa, we talked about when he got to the sideline, everyone giving him credit, high fives, everything. So popular. Senior, first touchdown of his career, opening game, Michigan State. What a nice, they, what a nice deal for that they, man. They also all saw that block that he threw, that paving block two plays prior to that. Way right, downtown. Way downtown. And it is caught. Dell is down at the bottom of that stack. And it is a 51 yard game. Defensively, Hagen was there. Well, this might be a simultaneous possession. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a review, but if it is a simultaneous possession, Offense. it is an offensive yeah. catch. Hagen made a wonderful play on the ball. I think that's what the referee is asking yep. his, uh, his fellow official. Yep. Let's take a look. Because it looked like Hagen may have had that ball first. Well, that looks more like Hagen's ball. The ruling on the field is simultaneous catch. By rule, it goes to the offense. That ruling is being challenged by Cal. And remember, we have a new rule. Coaches now can get that challenge back. Let's take a look there. It's hard to tell. This is yeah, I this think going to be a difficult one for I, I the replay guys. Yeah, because it's got to be indisputable. I think it's going to stand as called, Ron. I think I think Hagen may have got his hands on it first, but Dell did a fantastic job of getting his arms in on that ball. And when they hit the ground, which means when the catch happens, yeah. the catch doesn't happen in the air. It happens when you make possession on the ground. I think Dell is going to get this catch. We want to go back to coaches now have can get the challenge back. If this is overturned and given to Cal, not only does Tedford get his timeout back, he also gets one more challenge back. So he could still have one. What's rare is these replays are being shown here in the stadium on the screen also. So you got about, what is it, 80,000 <laughs> other people who have put on their striped shirts and trying to help make the decision for them. I, I, I'll be shocked if this gets overturned. It looked to me like they both had possession of the ball when they hit the ground. And again, I want to go back. It looked to me like Hagen had the ball After and then you, Dell. The ruling on the field stands. Yeah. Well, I know they're going, but I think they got this one exactly right, don't you? I, see, I don't argue with it. You're exactly right. Plus yeah. the fact that there was no other video that showed anything to overturn. Exactly. Yeah. And here comes Michigan State. The, the 25 yard line. 532 left to play. So now the key is Cal not only lost the lost tight end, but now Tedford does not have a challenge in case something were to happen later in the game. But a good challenge nonetheless, I think. I think that was worth taking another look at. Who? I mean, that's you yeah. know, that's neck and neck. Yeah. And a couple of the Cal defensive backs have gone around and it was actually Darian Hagan getting the crowd back into it because the crowd was so worried about the call being wrong I think they almost forgot what well, we need to help our guys out <laughs> good job by Hagan will the timer please will the timer please reset the game clock to five minutes and 30 seconds by rule a lost challenge is a charge timeout 
to Cal. The clock should not have started. So you can understand it's going to go back to 530. Since Cal loses the challenge, there is a charged timeout against the Bears. So timeouts left. Cal will have two, and Michigan State has three. Pressure up the middle. Hoyer gets blasted, and the ball is tipped and knocked away. Boy, I'll tell you, Hoyer is, he took another terrific shot that time. Sid Quinn Thompson got a hand on the ball. Well, he hung in there as long as he could. This is an all out blitz by Cal, and he gets absolutely chopped Derek in half by Derek Hill Woo. and almost got the ball over there. But Thompson made a really nice play on that late. Second down and 10. Draw play. Ringer breaks one tackle and then he goes down hard. And around the 17 yard line, Zach Follett made the tackle on him. So it'll be third down. Excellent job downfield by BJ Cunningham. When Ringer went to make that cut, Cunningham was still maintaining his block. And now, now is where you can think some play action, I think, for Michigan State because they've gotten Ringer going a little bit. Cal a little tired. They've been on the field. Take a handoff and look for your receiver down here at the bottom. Clock runs under 450 to play in our ball game. That's Cunningham in motion. Here they come with the pressure. Hoyer now delivers it and just throws it away into the end zone. And that was Warrell Williams who was coming after him pell mell. I think you got to kick this. I know that your kicker missed a field goal earlier. You're down 10. You're well within Swenson's range. That's exactly what D'Antonio is going to do. Got to stay in the game. If if you went for it and didn't get it, it'd be debilitating. I think the game would be over. Hey, ten point ball yeah. game. You got to have it. It doesn't matter what order they come in. You got to have seven. Yeah. You got to have three. Swenson to attempt it, and let's see where we're going to place it down. They're missing yeah, one Memphis person. State's missing Charlie Gant. The, yeah, the tight end in the formation. They they may have Play to take a timeout. Play clock is down to four. Yeah. Down to three. Take the down timeout. to two. Down to yeah. one. I'm not. Yeah, he I'm got not it. sure if he did he get a call yeah, barely, barely. Bates, the holder, jumped up just in time. So let's take a timeout. 442 remaining. Ten-point game will come back for the field goal attempt by Michigan State. Saturday night football on ABC. Brought to you by. Southwest Airlines, low fares, no hidden fees. Chick-fil-A, we didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. And Nissan, passionate about performance and proud sponsor of the Heisman Trophy. So we're back, time is back in. It's a 35-yard attempt. Brett Swinson. Senior out of Pompano Beach, Florida. Gets a good pass. Plenty of distance and height, and he is good. So with 438 showing on the clock, it now is a seven-point game. Cal 31-24. Now we're going to find out how much they trust this young quarterback, Kevin Riley, aren't we? Yeah. You know, I, I you, Michigan State is going to crowd the line of scrimmage. They don't want Vest to get going and have a long, lengthy drive obviously a turnover is devastating for Cal but I get the sense that they trust this young man he's been so efficient last year at the end of the season of the bowl game in this game so efficient with the ball hasn't really made many bad decisions I wouldn't be surprised a couple of play actions here get the chains moving and try to eat this clock well while we got an opportunity let's remind everybody the drama the romance it's the season premiere you've been waiting for Grey's Anatomy returns with a two hour television event Thursday September the 25th at 9 8 central time on ABC. One thing that you also have to pay attention to only 438 showing upon the clock now the Spartans do have two timeouts left but you don't want to go burning them to stop the clock until you're probably under that two minute barrier and here's where going out of bounds and the clock starting helps Cal. You can do everything on the sidelines now because if you go out until we get under two minutes, 
the game clock's going to run once they reset it. Here's the kick. This is a good one. Best all the way back to the goal line. And the chicken again with Matt Weiner. Matt. Our nominee for the AT&T ESPN All-America Player of the Week is BYU quarterback Max Hall. Had a big, big day in their season opener. 485 yards through the air, three total touchdowns, and the 16th-ranked Cougars big win. To cast your vote, just text the word vote to 51234 on your AT&T wireless telephone. Okay, Matt, our situation. Cal takes it over and not the good return that they've been getting. They scrimmage from their own 19 yard line. This is Marine. Right side breaks it. He could be gone. Let's count it. 50, 40, 30, 20 at the 10. Touchdown, Shane Marine. 81 yards. Career rushing touchdown for Shane Marine. And we told you the coaches said he was good enough to have played a bunch last year, but they didn't use him that way. <laughs> and I'll tell you, 81 yards later tonight, well, you, now you got two really great ones who are going to have to share some rushing time. What a run, and at what a time of the ball game. Shane Marine from Valencia, California. Thirty eight twenty four our score we talked about the fullback to full up and the, the paving block he threw on the, the last offensive series folks would you see the one he threw here along with the very young tackle this is what paved the way for the touchdown I'm going to show it to you after this uh, ball is kicked off there'll be a lot of hooping and hollering in the film room tomorrow yeah pretty good yards per carry average between those two guys. Javid Best last year when he was kind of a spot guy averaged almost eight yards per carry. Now he's more the every down guy so the guy who's going to be the home run guy is Marine. They're just swapping jobs with Justin Forsett gone. She right with the kick high spinner and short coming down at the 17. Ringer. And Ringer's going to move the pile. Okay, let's go back and look at the touchdown and look at this blocking. All right, Talfoa, the fullback, we already know he's a good blocker, so if you want to watch him, go ahead. But the guy you really should watch is right here, the right tackle, Mitchell Schwartz, going one on one with Greg Jones, gets under his pads, and Mitchell, may the Schwartz be with you. I got a little tag on, pull on the back of the jersey, but. He got his pads underneath of him, and that's what opened it. Talfoa goes one on one with the strong safety Wiley, and Schwartz goes up and just tattoos the middle linebacker and opens a huge hole. You know, the, the interesting thing is that pass is dropped right over the middle. He not only got Wiley, he took out 47 along the defensive end at the same time, so he got a two for one. But when pulled up to the building yesterday, they've got a bunch of the seniors' pictures ringing the, uh, that ring the stadium. And Will Tafoa was the first one we saw apartment proud. I'm not sure that Mark D'Antonio wants to, to see that picture as he heads to the team bus. Too high, almost intercepted by Hagen. So the clock is stopped 404 left to play in our ball game 38 to 24 Cal. Third down line to make is out at their own 46 yard line. Quick throw across the middle that's Dell got it complete and the first down with it. 
Stay tuned after the game for your late local news over most of these ABC stations. And over on ESPN, tune over to Sports Center for post game analysis as well as today's scores and highlights. Thrown and stepping out of bounds quickly is Blair White. And now Michigan State's got to hustle. Remember, out of bounds, outside of two minutes, it's going to wind as soon as they set it. And they need to save every second. Now they're down two touchdowns. They've got to. Yeah, they, I think they should be at the line. I don't think they should be huddling right now. Not the way Cal's running the ball. And there's some people sitting in the stadium saying, hey, the clock started to run. Well, that's right. That's part of the new rule. Going to go up on top on this one. And almost caught by Dell. He did a great job of leaping and then dropped the football. That would have been a heck of a catch, though. Marcus uh, Ezef was the man defending. And the clock does stop on other normal things like a incomplete pass. But boy, Mark Dell has really started to set himself. Now you've got Dell and Cunningham. They get a couple of those other guys, Fred Smith coming in. This could be a pretty good attack, especially with Ringer if you get that play action pass going down the road. Well, Dell is only a sophomore. B.J. Cunningham, a redshirt freshman. So. Got to have him complete to Gant, the tight end, and Charlie's going to take it down to the 30 yard line. So a 14 point lead, and the Spartans trying to do away with that and cut it in half. Well, the senior quarterback for Mark Antonio has played a pretty good second half, that's for sure. Pressure coming right up the middle, and the pass is intercepted and that is Hagan who cut in front and picked it off. What a excellent job by Darian Hagan cutting under this ball. Take a look and make sure that this is in fact an interception. The only thing I'm going by is the linesman was standing right there on the play. Let's see. Nope. Not an interception. Now the problem is they've got to get it reviewed. And Mark D'Antonio should be, if, if it's not going to get reviewed, he should call a timeout. But that's not an interception. The problem is it feels like the momentum has changed. And so even though I think Michigan State's going to get the ball back, well now he needs to call a timeout. There you go. There they, they just got it. Just got the timeout. And uh, Cal was about to snap the ball, which would make it. Someone upstairs needed to be telling Mark D'Antonio to call a timeout. He's so focused on what they should be doing. Well, let's take a quick timeout with them. 316 remaining, 38-24. Was it a catch or was it not? So we're back, and uh, the official review is still going on. Uh, but I think they're very close to a verdict here. What'd you think? Did you think he had it or not? You know the last piece of that last shot it did look like he was trying to to caress it between his elbows. Yeah, yeah exactly. And that's where it looked as though it might have come out and touched the ground. Yeah. But uh, judge for yourself here it is right here. See he's trying to bring it up but that sure yeah. looks like the white stripe doesn't yeah, it. That falls on the ground to me. Or was that the back of the shoe of Blair. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it, I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm asking actually because oh. uh, Blair White was right there in front of him. Was that the glow off his shoe or that football that had popped out? I think that was the stripe. And we should commend the replay officials tonight. They have been on top of this. That was not a timeout. That was not a challenge by Michigan State. Kind of surprised. You know, they didn't. It, it's like it's like the other night in Palo Alto. You sometimes you it surprises you but this is in back to back ball games that bang bang plays have have happened just like that and were huge as far as the outcome of the ball game and uh, replay either helped or After or you the review the pass was ruled incomplete it will be second down and 10 on the 29 yard line now Michigan State has to get refocused they had a nice little two minute hurry up type of drive going. And now they have to get refocused because Rod, I promise you, they went to the sideline and thought, game over. Right where it's done. We're going to get on the bus and regroup for next week's game. Let's see if they can get their focus back. So here's the situation. Now they're, they're having to reset the chains, reset the down marker. And the officials are not ready. 
No, in fact, they're going to have to. Yeah, they're going to have to hold it up because the chain gang now has to move, and it's going to be a second down and ten. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Second and ten. Quick pass. It is caught and he breaks away. It's Mark Dell and he'll score the touchdown. 29 yards and a broken tackle. They are <laughs> real, real close to making a brand new ball game out of this. Thing. And we've seen Mark Dell make a bunch of good catches tonight. That was by far the best. There was three cow defenders around and Sid Quan Thompson was coming right there and he just reached out, snagged it, stopped. Thompson went over instead of making a play on the man. It's always that question. Ball or the man? Thompson should have made a play on the man. That's how they get the touchdown. So the extra point attempt. Kick is up and it's good. And we're going to hold it right here. Seven point ball game. I mean, this. I'm telling you how great this catch is, but you're about to see it. Watch right when he catches it in traffic. He had a trailer. He had Thompson coming on there. He had Bernard Hicks. Thompson runs by, Hicks runs by, touchdown. But to stick his hands out, and that's just a bad job by Hicks. You got to wrap up. He went in to try to knock him down with his shoulder. But boy, this both Mark Dell and BJ Cunningham. Six two guys with long arms and really good hands. That's a heck of a catch by Mark Dell. So here we go again. Now as we look at the scoreboard, both teams with two timeouts each. We now have 3:09 to play, and it's a 38 to 31 ball game. And Cal sitting on top. How huge is that 81 yard run by Marine now? <laughs> How huge is the overturned interception? I mean, this game is just not going away. I don't think you, I think you kicked this away. 309, two timeouts. I think you've got to trust your defense to try this. This is best. Best tried to cut it back to the middle, and he's out to the 37 yard line. Heather Cox, what do you got for us? Ron Javid Best is still going strong despite the fact that he's been battling cramps throughout the second half when the offense has been on the bench he spent the majority of the time on the ground stretching his hamstrings fighting cramps and downing Gatorade now don't forget this is a brand new role he's not used to carrying this load there wasn't one game last year where he carried the ball more than four times tonight he's already carried the ball 21 times. By comparison, last year he carried the ball 29 times the entire season. So an entirely new role for Best tonight. <laughs> no, no question. So Vereen is in the lineup and he gets the handoff. Vereen's the man that went 81 yards from scrimmage to score a touchdown just a few moments ago as Greg Jones comes over to make the tackle this time. Well, Michigan State using one of their two timeouts, the clock ran for a few more seconds, so I think they may put some back on, but Yeah, they're gonna put five seconds back on. And it's correct, but I'm always a fan when you only have two timeouts. Don't call it on first down because if Cal gets a first down right now, you've wasted it. I always think you should take it on second and third, but that's just me. They've only got one left. All by seven points or less here are the six losses by the Spartans last year. And you know the one thing that uh, Mark D'Antonio and his staff took away from this. They turned it into a positive and what the message they've given their team is every one of our games last year you prepared to win it. Now let's figure out how to close those games out. So that's the message he's been sending. Don't look at it as the six losses. Look at it that you prepared every single week to put yourself in position to win. And they've done the same here tonight. Best is back in the lineup replacing Shane Vereen. Best cuts it against the grain. One man to beat. Broke the tackle and then caught from behind when he slowed up by Brandon Long. That was Johnny Davis that he spun around and got away from. What a determined run. Yeah, and, and now it's just what we were talking about that timeout. 
Boy, he's got real nice vision. But, you know, Heather made a really good point. And I, 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 he got banged up a little bit on that one. That the role change with losing Justin Forsett, this young man has not done this in a long time, had to carry the load. Brand new for both he and Shane Perrine. Terrell Cunningham, the man in motion. Best, they're working again. And this time he'll have about five yards. Oh, this widely defensively. Six straight thousand yard rushers for Cal. So when you investigate this situation and look at those numbers and look at the names, and let me tell you, as good as Best is and as good as Marine is showing that he can be, are they going to be seven and eight? Could be. I mean, they're going to share carries for sure. And Cal sitting in a situation now where I don't think they can quite run out the clock without another first down. I don't think you're going to see the ball in the air at all. Best in behind the line of scrimmage and knocked down for a loss by Greg Jones. And there's the man we talked about as a deep, as a timeout. Did they call it? Didn't yes, they? yeah. Michigan State called a timeout. Okay. Yep. Here he is right down here. He's going to jump inside. That's just super quickness jumping inside the block of Cameron Mora. And that's a bit of a mismatch. More good, more good around in, in space. And that time, good job of Jones ducking his shoulder, getting underneath of him. Well, Jason O'Mara is modern day NYPD detective Sam Tyler, who finds himself hurled way back to the tumultuous times of the 1973 New York City. He's the right cop in the wrong time. Life on Mars series premiere Thursday, October the 9th at 10, 9 Central, right after all new Grey's Anatomy. Ron Franklin, Ed Cunningham, and Heather Cox coming to you from Berkeley, California. We started off with a very bright, high sky, very blue. No, no clouds around. Well, now we're in the artificial lights or the lights that they bring in. I shouldn't say artificial, but I guess they have to use them here when they have night games because there are none at uh, Memorial Stadium. They're in full effect. We have 135 left to play, and it's a seven-point Cal lead. Third down and 12, though. This is Vereen holding on to the ball dearly with both hands, and it'll be fourth down and 10. You're going to get down to around with the new 40-second clock down to around, we'll call it 50 seconds. And if I were Cal, I'd let every second go and then use one of those timeouts. And you've, you, you could even get backed up. Remember, Anger, their punter, can really boom it. You could even take the five yard penalty, and Michigan State's going to have eh, 40, 45 seconds with no timeouts to maybe go 80, 90 yards to see if they can't try to tie this thing. And it's going to be around 50 seconds or just below. Four down to three on the play clock, down to two, down to one, and it's at 48. And I think this was the right strategic thing for Jeff Tedford to do at home. He's going to get help from his crowd during this hurry up drill. He's got a very good punter, although let's not forget, Anger let that one snap go through his hands because the snapper for the Golden Bears is awfully good. Right now, let's take a look at the Chevrolet MVPs of our game tonight. Well, for us, it was an easy one. Otis Wiley has played sensational special teams, had two interceptions of Nate Longshore, returned the one for the touchdown. And Kevin Riley, second start of his career, but I think his dad maybe made the best point about it. He's had all this time to think about that start. You know, that Oregon State week going back to last year, he found out he was starting when Longshore was hurt, so he didn't have much time to think about it. He came out and performed very well, very efficient. Yep, he really was. So Brian Anger. It's Otis Wiley who is back deep. The ball is off the side of his foot. And now it's just kind of going dead with the bounce. Takes a Michigan State hop and goes out of bounds at around the 28-yard line. Don't go anywhere. 
and there was the pressure I think that anger I think was afraid he, he let that snap because the snap was so hard he didn't want to drop it. he let it into his body took him another half a second to get it off Michigan State brought pressure and I think that's what got him. didn't resettle it in his hands no, and that's what he killed off the side of his foot so the crowd comes to their feet 40 seconds left Cal by seven Michigan State with a first down at their 29. Deep over the middle. It is caught by Mark Dell. He got ripped out of the sky and still held on to the football. Good for 21 yards. This Dell is a star in the making. Hoyer again from the shotgun. Near sideline. Almost intercepted. Jumping in front was Hagen. And Hagen upset with himself because it went right between the mitts. Now you're at 27 seconds for Michigan State. Everything has to be either near the sidelines or beyond the sticks if you go to the middle of the field. I think it'll be a big mistake in 27 seconds to throw something in the middle of the field short of the sticks because they just don't have much clock left. Second down of 10, but that's not really important right now. It's at the 50 yard line. Here comes pressure. Hoyer got it away, puts it up for grabs out of bounds. Alu Alu again, number 44 with heavy pressure. And what a, it's unbelievable how much pressure they're getting. They're only rushing three down. You know, I, I was going to make the point that you go to three down and your quarterback should have all day. Michigan State's offensive line has to figure out how to get help on Alu Alu because he's a one man wrecking crew. They're not helping out on him right now. Tell you, Tyson has really been something. Tyson Alualu out of St. Louis High School in Honolulu. And they put a running back over here this time to help because they cannot let him get that pressure. Pass tipped and almost intercepted at the 34 yard line. Followed is the man who tipped it. And Ezef almost came up with the pick. And here you go. And they have it. 18 seconds left, fourth down. You know, Ron, they haven't run many drag routes with people crossing. Look for maybe some kind of crossing route just before the stick and see if someone can run for the first down. Alulu just flipped to this side. There is not a blocker over there. Let's see if it makes a difference. Timeout, California. Their final timeout of the half. So the final timeout of the half is called by Cal. Now I wonder when Michigan State comes back out if they're going to flip that fullback and put him over on the left side because I would think you better. Uh, Alou <laughs> yes. has just been all over the place. Yeah and uh, the night that Mark Dell is having you may want to double cover him. Uh, he's awfully winded but he boy he just jumps off the field. His, he's very competitive. He'd go up and get the ball great hands. We watch this catch with the hit that he takes. His hands are just spectacular. Let me tell you something. His 202 yards receiving tonight, that's the fifth best in Spartan single game history. And, and the young man is only a sophomore. Time's back in. 18 seconds left. Fourth down. They need to take it to the 40. And again, Alou is left unattended on this side. Stepping up, drills the ball, tipped and incomplete. It is Cal football at the 50 yard line. Tipped by Anthony Felder. Well, uh, Brian Hoyer, as soon as he let that go, he put his hands on his helmet. He just missed through this ball. He was looking for Dell. There was good coverage, but there was either a miscommunication or he just missed through this ball. I think he expected Dell to continue his route, but Dell could. There were too many guys, and listen, take nothing away from Michigan State. They could have folded their tent a long time ago yeah. with as bad as things were going. But they hung in there and fought. And how about that? Another loss by seven points or fewer for Mark Antonio's team going right back to last year. Riley takes the knee. This one goes in the record books as an opening home game win for California. But Jeff Tetford is going to tell you the very first one to tell you.
that they got the win. He's proud of his team, but also Michigan State scared them to death. And both of these coaches talked about what they were going to learn about their team, good opponent and non-conference, so it doesn't hurt them in the conference. And both of these guys have a tremendous amount of respect after a game like this. And this is a great sight. Nobody's heading to the locker room. Both teams have come together to, to shake hands and say great effort. That this is a good scene right here on the floor of Memorial Stadium. Once again, our final score, California 38 and Michigan State 31. Next Saturday night on ABC, it's NASCAR. The final race before the chase. The Chevy Rock and Roll 400 at Richmond. Thanks for watching ESPN on ABC tonight. Again, Cal 38 and Michigan State 31. Good night, everybody. This has been a special presentation of ESPN on ABC.